still in the fridge? Give me a second. I know Bill's. Oh, you're not already in the fridge. Like, I'm ready for the realist start time. Oh, no, we're recording. <laughs> it's like the beginning of the, the next episode that comes out tomorrow. They're well, singing that. Uh, no, sorry. Um, Smash Mouth. <laughs> I was fucking dying. You're like, hold on. Did we start? And I was like, yeah, that's going to stay. <laughs> uh-huh. You're like, all right, on with the show. <laughs> Do we have the dice here? <laughs> yeah. It's right by the white cable. <clears throat> and I was able to kind of get the Omegle, I got it too. Uh, video by just kind of <laughs> zooming in. It doesn't look great. But it doesn't look bad and it's better than nothing. So that's a save. <laughs> Four. Would you like some weed? Three. What Would you share? Mean? Can you share this? Uh, you hit? I'm okay for now. Okay. Just let me know. All right. What's the order then? I don't <laughs> want to fuck up the uh, podcast. Yes. Four. All right. Me and him, and then you last. Okay. Perfect. I get to go in the middle. Favorite. I get to go first. <laughs> Although I wouldn't have minded going first today. But... Got a lot to fine say. With how, fine with how it crumbles. No. All right. Well, yes. Yes. No. <coughs> you got well, your show. So. Since we're tracking, I mean, we follow the rule of the dice. You know. <laughs> yeah, we follow the code. Follow the die. <laughs> follow the code of uh. We're, the other- we're actually going to start playing CeeLo on the show live to determine the order. So we got to get two more die. What? I don't know what that is. What's CeeLo? It's like dice, like the game. It's like the game of, you know, when people are like, I want to play dice. CeeLo is a very popular dice game that I learned from Marv on tour. <laughs> um, Danny knows how to play it because the despised icon guys told him. It used to be like an old school oh. touring thing that people would bet their shit on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny, Danny lost a lot yeah, of money on off that. Off of CeeLo. Yes, and I do a, vaguely remember that. Yeah, it's a game you play with three die. And uh, it honestly fucking like I think it's sick because it's so hood, uh-huh. but it does suck because it's like really hard. <laughs> it's like very low luck in my opinion to like. Well, that's all gambling. Yeah, <laughs> it's like one of those things where you're like, yeah, I probably would gamble like half of my chicken nuggets or like you know your, what I mean, uh, something that's not. That there goes your buyout. Of that much of, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And he probably lost his whole buyout. Dude, there sure. was so much shit on that Joel episode now, by the way that we've started, but uh, that Joel episode that is adding up in my head from shit that Danny has told me incorrectly about the, that tour that they were on together. I'm like, oh, yeah. I knew that wasn't true. I knew Danny didn't got that wrong. I knew That's like, because Danny used to tell me that Mike Smith wasn't on that tour that Suffocation did. And I'm like, wait a minute. I was at that show. Mike Smith was definitely playing <laughs> drums. Like, then he was like, no, man, no. What do they call it the uh, unreliable narrator? That's definitely Danny. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is him. Well, anyway, we are here with our resident death metal guest, Mr. Nate Madden. Welcome back. Hey. <laughs> You're uh, This is your first time doing one in here with us, right? No, this is probably no, the second. second. The second one? Oh, okay. Last time I, I came in in person for the first time. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's just our first time all three being in the same place in a few weeks. It has been. Yeah. <laughs> Our first time all we were here two days ago. <laughs> oh, you guys were? Yeah. Fuck yeah. In the pre-pro stuff. Hell yeah. By Moving the way, along. I can. T- I'll talk to you guys about it after. But I should have more open availability coming up soon because. Oh, cool. Guitar tracking is coming underway, and I won't have to participate. Fuck, we don't want you here, though. <laughs> Fine by me. <laughs> so used to it. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll be fun. Anyway, let's, let's get to the show. We'll talk about yeah. the band stuff. Later. Anyway, uh, yeah, here we are fucking talking about dude i'm like i like all these records i like all the albums honestly yeah, yeah i do i think at the i end want of the you day, to pronounce every song title on this phil jarda album i'll give it a shot no. <laughs> uh, me too. oh man i i'm so stoked that we're talking about this and i just got high for the first time today because like it can't be any better and i brought physical copies for both of you to check out so you could see the sick ass like artwork. the insane artwork that's been that they commissioned for like every single song and there's a lot of songs on this so fucking cool. record first off um should we just start should we just get into this yeah, yeah that's what we're doing all right yeah, let's there's get always into this it. kind of soft intro thing yeah I we mean, usually have a soft the whole intro. time and you're a fan of that <laughs> I have to say, I do have to address something actually before we get into this because we're all on this show and I need your guys hot take on this. So, uh, 
have you guys been seeing maybe it's me and maybe it was just me who caught this article but there's a big article um going around on the internet about well, it was on Metal Sucks, and it was about Limp Bizkit's low sales numbers for their new surprise record. I didn't, I didn't uh, see that, but I saw you post something about it. Yeah, <clears throat> bunch. Of, I saw a couple news outlets just saying like they fucking tanked first week, or they didn't sell nearly as much as they have in the past first week. And then I thought about it, and I was like, but it was a surprise record. And what they are they comparing make- it to? Like the previous album? I don't know. When that came out in that Metal time, Sucks when, compared like, it to the new Arc Spire because the new Arc Spire outsold it. But yeah, to me, that makes I sense. I believe that. Yeah, same. Yeah. There's a lot like, of fucking hype for the Arc Spire and like, you know, <clears throat> PR shit that went into it. Whereas like Limp Bizkit, it was like the week before. They're like, yeah. by the way, album. Like, it what? seems <laughs> like people are just taking jabs. Certain music outlets, such it's not even just Metal Sucks. I've seen it on other sites. People are just taking jabs at them for not like being successful with said record. But I mean, does it matter? I was going to comment on it and I was like, ah, it's like, so much i want to say about yeah, that like right saying like basically i mean can we they're talk just, about the re- i just want to talk about the record now i'm like sure we can talk we a little can bit talk about it, but okay so have you I, heard I, it I, yeah, yeah i listened to the whole thing I, I, I saw them back in july at the metro it was like one of my first concert experiences you know and in, in during covid and i loved it i thought it was really cool it was it was definitely a strange experience because fred durst was being a completely different character he was like a, a wearing a wig dad, and being an old man and being yeah. super humble but it was a really fun show uh they did some really strange stuff that they didn't do at the lala set uh like when the bass player and fred durst played some acoustic stuff like yeah they covered the cure they they didn't play i don't think they played blue eyes they might actually they did they played part Behind of it blue acoustic eyes. only yeah um and I, I don't know. I just figured like, well, it's a wacky, like weird headlining set. Uh, listen to the record. It, it makes some sense because there are some kind of more out of place acoustic ballad songs. And um, I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys are familiar with Finn McKenty, who runs the punk rock. MBA. I am. Uh, I just watched a, a full review from him and he, he kind of trashes the record just as like, a you know, for stuff like that, for having acoustic songs and not being a great new metal comeback. I think it's a pretty entertaining album. I wouldn't say I love every song. However, the whole like, let's jump on Limbiscuit for not selling enough records thing. I haven't seen too much of that, but I feel like that's kind of fueling the fire of the record. Yeah, right. You know, it's like, well, I got to listen to this now. And I mean, yeah, they didn't care enough to make physical stuff. I'm assuming they wanted it to come out closer to the heels of their tour with Spirit <laughs> Box that they ended up canceling just due to COVID concerns. And I just, I think anybody that's going out of their way to dunk on Limbiscuit now, it's kind of silly. Yeah, it, it was probably silly. silly a while ago, but to just be like that band always sucked. It's like their album is called Still Sucks. Yeah, I mean they're they're very they're self aware at this yeah. point. Yeah, but that's the thing that band's so established that like they don't need money. They, yeah, they don't need they money. Didn't have merch. At they the don't show. need to be making any fucking hits. <laughs> yeah, they got all saying. the hits. You know like, what I mean? You know, if they play a set, they're probably gonna play like a song or two off this new album, yeah. and then all the ones that everybody wants to hear. Which is probably what you heard at the Metro and Lock Yeah, Palooza. you know, they played all the, the big hits, you know, yeah. at least from what I saw on the live. I mean, they ba- I don't think like they the played much of anything off like albums, you know, like in between. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, they played were, all the hits, you, like, I don't the think big you heard ones. anything from $3 Bill, y'all. I don't think you that heard. Well, I heard a lot of $3 Bill, y'all. Yeah, oh, that they you? definitely played. That album's it. the they shit. They, they definitely got to play that. At the, at the, La I'm talking about Lava Blues. Yeah, I don't know about that. Jarvis compared to what I got to see. I'm I see. Yeah. I mean, they, they still I'm only the, going off that. The big hits. They didn't play. A lot of stuff was sick, though. I watched that uh, YouTube it was. video. <laughs> it was fun. What didn't they play, though? There was a big song. I want to say they didn't play In Together Now, obviously, which I guess kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's one more. Oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank. They right didn't now. play Boiler. Did what they play Boiler when you saw it? Yeah. yeah they did. That's fucking um, awesome. There's another one of their big hits off of Significant Other, though. They didn't play that I was uh, surprised to not hear. Nookie? No, no played they played Nookie. that take him to the matthews bridge i might have to like look at the there's that nookie the there's that break stuff yeah you might have to there's some good songs on that record though but yeah i love that. i do i do not i shouldn't say i love it but i do enjoy the new limp biscuit i, I think like it's it. cool i think the first riff on the record sounds like viljarda in a way <laughs> And first two songs uh, are like the shit like Limp Bizkit dude yeah. it's like old Jarda. <laughs> I just in my mind I was like wait a minute like I can see the connection here you know oh, what I mean it's rearranged like, they didn't play rearranged uh, which I thought was uh, weird that's a pretty big that's a big hit. song yeah mm-hmm. um, probably just for the sake of keeping the energy up at, at Lala I mean that's why or I'm talking about even at the show I, saw, oh. I mean I don't know uh, you just don't like playing it or I don't, I don't know I'm sure they had their reasons maybe Sam Rivers new liver wasn't working properly and couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the bass player? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was awesome at that show. Like he he played more songs than Wes did. That's hysterical. That's why well, Wes didn't want to get down with the acoustic shit, which makes sense when you're dressed like that. You're like, hold <laughs> so on. Let me get an Sam Rivers grabbed the guitar and then Yeah, play. he he played the acoustic stuff with friends. That's Fred. cool. Two baldies. Interesting. <laughs> Baldinos. Yeah, brothers, brothers are baldness. Fredders had his wig on, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Duh. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, yeah, I just I just thought it was interesting because it, it was sort of like, and I'll bring this back up later when we talk about the Ark Spire record. So actually I'm going to say this point until well, then. The other know, thing, other than just talking about the Still Sucks record, which I don't, I didn't finish the new metal episode yet. Maybe you guys talked about it on there. No, no it, it wasn't, wasn't out yet. yet. It wasn't even the, announced The other yet. thing is, is uh, I noticed this because of the Bad Wolves record because I followed Doc Coyle more than I followed <laughs> I listened that to that band. too. Um, yeah, I tried listening to that. There's some okay shit. There's a lot of, I wasn't even going to say man. we should talk about that musically, but he's kind of come out and said like, Hey guys, like we're not trying to get first week sales with this. Look at how our label released it. They released one single on streaming, one on YouTube only, and then they put out the record. And he's saying like the idea there with a band that's that huge, that's that's commercially successful is that it'll be more of a slow burn. Like you can stream the whole record now. They can get their streaming numbers up that way. They can put various songs in playlists. They can continue to release like singles just via music video or via radio because they have radio in that band. Mm Mm-hmm. And so they're kind of hoping that it'll be more of like a slow burn with their record and it'll lead to huge streaming numbers because that's what they care about the most. That in addition to the fact that for whatever reason, despite how huge that band is, their vinyl isn't shipping for six months. Yeah, I believe that. Well, some people, I don't know, some labels, they seem like they're, they have a connection or something. (laughs) Some of them don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand it because I mean, I see, uh, you know, metal records have a faster turnaround than like Brockhampton. Like I pre-ordered Brockhampton's vinyl a year in advance. It's not shipping until next April and they're on RCA. Holy you know shit, what I mean? They're really? like, yeah. How is that possible? How does somebody not work for RCA have like a hookup with no whatever fucking idea. pressing plant, you know, whatever one that like small, you know, that arc spire used or what, you know? Yeah. I have like, no idea. I have no clue. Although with their record, they might've just waited because I think they recorded that like right around when COVID hit or maybe even right before. Yeah. Maybe Bill knows when we talk about it. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I can't remember because I remember hearing him t- Dean talk about it in some of the YouTube videos a while ago. Yeah. I remember. It when was in 2020. You, they recorded. It was before. Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like, yeah, there was like a the break where he was off recording it. And that was like a long time ago. Uh-huh. So yeah, I think they did. They must have just waited. Because yeah. fuck it. Why not? Well, yeah. You know, the industry's changing. Always changing. It is ever changing. Underground metal like will always, always ever be changing being more so, stuck in the past and more attached to physical sales. Because so, people people that are metal fans, you know, they want vinyl, they want CDs. Still, right. Which like I don't I doubt Limp Biscuit would have made CDs. Maybe because they're a throwback band. But they could have done vinyl. They probably could have sold like <laughs> I would say at least Ten thousand records first. I bet week. they if will they do vinyl, to. but I bet they're not going to do it for a while. But I bet eventually they'll do a vinyl press. A Maybe. lot of artists they have like. I feel like Limp Bizkit has Fred Durst definitely has the hip hop mentality in certain ways as far as releasing music because like, I mean, it's such a fucking hip hop thing to do that. Be like, my record is done now. I'm fucking releasing it in the now. Look at like ev- like every giant hip hop artist. That's how their records come out. Kanye West, Drake, same fucking thing. Oh, the Kanye thing is weird because Tyler he said the was, Creator he said it wasn't done. Well, no, that's the whole thing. <laughs> it's just like, but that's how it's like. These guys don't wait six months for their vinyl turnaround to drop mm-hmm. it. They're just like living in the moment so fast that they're like, this is out now. Like Tyler the Creator, I feel like his rollout for his record was like less than a month. You know what I mean? And and then it was mm-hmm. out streaming, and it's like. Those guys are artists, though, that get probably most of their earnings from streaming, you know, and radio play and shit. But it's so, very, it reminded me of that. And how, even, I don't think a lot of people know this, but Limp Biscuit actually, their record that was supposed to be the original successor to Gold Cobra was supposed to come up, come out on Cash Money Records, which is like Lil Wayne's record <laughs> label. It's a fucking hip hop label. So it's like that, even in itself to me, was just like, wow, that's crazy. They're like going that route. And even if they were, like, if they were still on Cash Money, which they're not, mm-hmm. but like, it would have been not a shock to me that they went this route of just like being like, our record's done now did they release this album i don't know i don't think i think maybe just themselves we can no. look on the internet. yeah i mean Wes, i listened to a podcast uh when i was flying to new york like mm. july with that west borland was on i can't even remember which one it was but he basically said the record had been done instrumentally for a long time for like years hmm. 
And it was all about, you know, being patient with Fred and Fred trying to get this vocals right. And there's definitely some filler tracks on there where you're like, wow, mm. you spent this long on this record and you still put this song on it? Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, I don't know. Some of it seems a little rushed too because, like, oh, there was like this big, re- you know, everybody's like a fan of Limp Bizkit again. They fucking did Lollapalooza. It was huge. The Metro sold out. Like, if they would have finished that tour, it probably would have come out right on the heels of it. I think. You think so? But because they didn't, I'm assuming it was just kind of like, uh, or at least it now. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but they all have enough money where I, I obviously like them not having merch <laughs> probably on that whole tour. Definitely not for that show uh, is indicative of a band that doesn't care about making money. Yeah. I mean, even Metallica playing Metro, they had a shirt and a poster and they were like, 40 bucks for the shirt or something, <laughs> you know, and like, I'm sure they sold out of them. And yeah. And then that paid for their, like, uh, their personal assistance salary for the day or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You know, it was just crazy. They probably still lost money on that. Probably got gas yeah. money for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, they were, they were traveling in limousines to and from their, uh, probably five star hotels. Jesus. But Jesus yeah, I could have paid for the, the people that moved their gear for him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe pay for the text lunch. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Jesus Christ. Man, imagine being a tech for those dudes. That'd be sick. <laughs> It'd probably be awesome, but also kind of stressful because you're you're probably essentially on retainer. Yeah. And if Metallica's ever like be here at this place, if you can't, you're getting replaced. Right? Oh, immediately. I mean, maybe not. Yeah. Like, I know they have the same front of house guy probably forever. Mm-hmm. Uh big Mick, but I mean if you're just Plus like, you only work like one day a week or two. Yeah, but it, let's say know. like let's say you have a death in the family, or you're like, oh, I want to go on vacation, but Metallica's got a tour. Like you're really, you got to make a big choice. Death, okay, family or vacation? No, nah. the family like, they worry might give me. you a, give you a break like, for, but you might even death in the family. I'd be like, nah, I'm gonna go tour with. Metallica. I'll see you guys <laughs> later. Like fuck yeah, that. I guess it depends. That gig would be so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew, you'd be banging a lot until made until like James Hetfield. Like, well yells at you and makes you want to kill yourself james hadfield yeah I think he does uh i don't know it'd be pretty scary though if he got mad at me Berated i can't imagine text. any of the others being like that angry yeah like lars lars would probably be tough yeah to i would hate for. drum ticket for that fuck i feel Actually, like I would that would probably dig it because it would be like he's awesome man. yeah he's such a sick <laughs> guy man and he probably would i would love to like here is fucking outlandish some, requests. Yeah, he'd probably say some asshole shit to you and then like apologize the next day. Yeah. Be like, oh, I'm really sorry. That was really shitty of me. At least Lars now. I mean, it seems like they're all like, yeah, Don't back in, back when people. Lars in his 20s, that probably would have been a nightmare. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any of those guys in their 20s probably would have been a fucking shit show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right well we got some fucking real records to talk about today <laughs> real real records. real music yeah, Whoa, real fucking big music take that here. everybody else yeah take that metallica let's let, these guys <laughs> are about to show you how it's done jk as in none of them will definitely amount to any record sales of any of their albums probably maybe i'm wrong what about lulu you put all the records together and you <laughs> just take the physical copies of Lulu and maybe. I just ran into somebody the other day that was talking about that. Lulu? <laughs> Almost yeah. no yeah. one talks about it anymore because Lou Reed's dead. Well, it's like, I think we talked about it a bunch the, of more. The reason why it got brought up was this dude was talking about when he goes on tour and they run out of shit to listen to. They just listen to albums that, you know, did poorly or whatever, or never <laughs> quite received well. And they just listen to the whole thing and they're just like, oh, fuck. This is yeah. like as bad as I remember, maybe worse. Who knows? Uh huh. And yeah, that that album got brought up. <laughs> as well as yeah. I was a little bummed he said reload. And I was like, I own that album. Come on, man. <laughs> I love that record. Do we listen to Lulu on tour willingly, like every tour at some really? point? Really? Yeah. Part I've of heard it, like a snippet of it. We've listened to I've heard the whole thing multiple times now. <laughs> really? But yeah. I think it's I I don't know how I feel about it. I don't take shots at it anymore. Um there are parts of it I think are funny. There are parts of it I like. And then there's some of it I don't under a lot of it I don't understand, but that's, fair. that's Lulu. And I didn't pick that record. Should have. <laughs> yeah, next time for death metal. <laughs> what's the, what's the <laughs> yeah? What's the name of this record? Can you this record? It? I I could try. I don't really. Uh, know. Mostaden under Vatten is what it's called. Um, Sound like you knew what you're saying by a band called Viljarda. And do you want do you want to know what it means? Yeah, something underwater, right? Yes. So Mastodon is the city that 
the Viljarna records conceptually take place in. Their first record was just titled Mastodon. This is their oh. second full length called Mastodon Underwater, essentially. So Mastodon roughly translates to City of the Seagulls. And uh, we could get into that. Uh, we could get into a lot here because there's a lot. There's a okay. So I picked the new Viljarna record mm-hmm. and partially because I love it, partially because I figured it'd be the only way I could get either of you to ever listen to it. <laughs> Not that I would even expect, I don't even expect, I don't, I don't know what you guys would even think of this. Cause this is a fucking ass of an, there's just a lot. There's a lot here. It's an ass we got a, we got a double record here, essentially. That's eight, way too long. It's very fucking long. At least you admit it. Yeah. Oh, it's way too long. I mean, for like the stand, if you want a regular record, this is not it. This record, in in my opinion, is just one hundred percent perfect, like fan service to me as, okay. a, as a person. You know, like um, I am like one hundred percent unfamiliar with this band. I know the name. That's okay. it. This is yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. I've ever heard anything by them. So Viljarda is like a gent band, necess- most that's more. A, or less. I thought, yeah, they they came up in the gent community, and that's where they like broke. Mm-hmm. Was there? They used to have like straight up songs that just sounded like tesseract or periphery like okay. their demos and stuff like that and back then i never really gave too much of a fuck about them mm. i n- nothing really struck with me it wasn't until their first record came out that had more of this like dark and atmospheric vibe to it that really turned me on to them where i was like whoa this is like something different mm. than what i was used to at least at least at the time because jet was so big back in like 2010 2011 and it was coming out of the everywhere you know what i mean like periphery was on the rise tesseract was on the rise <clears throat> all these sumerian bands were doing it like it was just becoming the big thing and i liked viljarda the most because they had sort of this like darker vibe to it and uh just a different take on it a little bit at least back then but uh <clears throat> man i cannot stress to you guys how much i fucking love this album it's uh like everything i want in a record from this first off it's just like I don't think anybody expected this to even happen because this band had been, it's their first full length back in 10 years. First release, I believe out of eight years. So Mm. they kind of hadn't been doing that much shit. Um, Why? I don't know. Um, I know the drummer who also produced the record, the record buster. uh, I can't remember the name of the band. Now he plays guitar. Humanity's last breath. And he's also a producer. Yeah, a very Maybe sick producer. <laughs> so there was a lineup. That is change. probably busy. <laughs> Buster is not the original drummer. Buster is actually one of the newest members of the band. Technically, mm. um, he came to the band after their first full length, and that drummer left. Buster joined in, and then they they did an EP before that drummer left called Thousands of Evils, which I really liked. Um, they did one tour in North America, opening for Vela vale Maya when. The single after that album Eclipse came out, it was called like Patient Zero. I don't know if you guys remember that song. Uh, it was like the I last, remember the yeah the last one I did with Brand Butler. Yeah, I remember that came out, and I was kind of <clears throat> I don't know. I was kind of stoked about it, but obviously that whatever album, some of that yeah stuff that EP ended up it exists on Triarch or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a tour in support of that single. It was like a headliner they were doing. It was like structures volumes i think and viljarda and some other bands i didn't even see them on the show i should have um which sucks that i didn't <laughs> max went though max saw oh it. nice uh but yeah and uh they kind of just fell back to the dark and i figured i was like okay they were just one of those bands that didn't break it you know like they didn't they have a lot of very unconventional song structures and you know it's it's sort of like the antithesis of a band like periphery where it's like catchy and pretty sounding and like hooky it's like this is the opposite of all of that um in my opinion but um yeah and then they started releasing some music within the last couple of years i believe this was actually supposed to come out last year um with the timeline but obviously COVID fucked up everything so that wasn't happening but yeah they had announced in 2019 that they were working on new music and they started posting like uh little demo clips on youtube of certain songs so it was like oh cool this band might be doing something again but i never really held my breath because i was like would i really like this band as much as i did 10 years ago like i didn't know i didn't think i would and the clips they were cool but it wasn't really anything that grabbed my attention per se 
Um, and then they released the first single off of this album. They didn't even announce the record. They just released it as a single. It was the sixth song, Den Hellage Anden under Vatten, which means the holy other. And uh, I loved it. I was like, oh, fuck, this is different for this band. There's some four on the this big four on the floor, like slightly melodic intro. I'm like, whoa, they don't do shit like this. This is kind of cool that it goes into, you know, all the fucked up shit that it goes into. But uh, I was really into it. I was like, fuck, this sounds way better than it did before production wise. And like the song structure, songwriting sounds a little more mature than before. And uh, I was all on board. And then they finally announced this album as not only, you know, the successor to the full length, but almost as like a literal, like the, I think what really sells me on this band the most is like the conceptualness of this, because it's like, I think one of the sickest things ever done period in metal where it's like, you know, the first record is about a fictitious town. This is about the same fictitious town, but literally 10 years later, like it lines up with real life. And, uh, it's really interesting. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop for a second before <laughs> I go forward. And I want to hear what you guys think of it. Well, I was going to say <clears throat> I didn't, maybe didn't have enough time didn't dig deep enough to really get into the concept. Sure. I can and, tell and I think all about it. If you maybe, all I think, may, yeah, you should. Cause I think maybe I missed a lot okay. because of that. Like I didn't know what the title meant other than I guess that, that was underwater. Yeah. And they have another record that's Mastodon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's, what's going on with the concept? So Mastodon, the first record. Well, you mentioned that it's this fictional city. Correct. I'll give you what, and, and these are my interpretations. It's at least from what I can gather from it, but I don't even know if I have this a hundred percent right. The first record uh, is about this town Mastodon. Um, that is run by as you know what, what I'm going to do while I'm telling you guys this, mm. we're going to pass along the booklets for you guys to check out <laughs> so you could see this fucking insane artwork. Yep. So here I got one for you too. I brought two copies because <laughs> I figured it would just be easier. How many copies do you own? A lot. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I thought that some of the lyrics were definitely in, is it Swedish? Yeah, they're all in Swedish, actually. I was, like, really trying to hear yeah. some of them, and I'm like, oh, maybe this is actually just another yeah. language. Yeah, so but this is their first... I figured as much when this I could their, understand yeah. what was going on. I was like, that's not English. <laughs> this is their first release where they've gone all Swedish uh, with the lyrics. In oh, okay. Mastodon... So, between the albums, I know you said it was a long mm-hmm. gap, how many members have changed... I hmm. want to say like more than half of the band. Okay. So they on Mastodon, they had two vocalists oh, on really? the first record. Yeah. They used to be a two vocalist band. This is their first release with just the one dude. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the best move they've ever made. Uh, Cause they definitely didn't need two singers. And I think the vocal delivery on this record is the best they've ever done personally, just as a fan. But uh, yeah, that changed their drummer changed. Obviously they got Buster in the picture. They used to be a three guitar band. Now they only got two guys. Hmm. Um, I want to say they don't have an official bass player like every band in the world now, the way um, to do if you're in a but I don't really band. know what they're, no. what they're planning on doing this band because like, I don't know what their future is. They just dropped this. They haven't announced any tours. I think they announced a show they're playing in Sweden, but that's been it so far. But, uh, Whoa, this is like crazy for the, yeah. last, the last page of the booklet. I know. I've right? seen, I think I've seen that yeah, photo. I, I wasn't expecting You'll that. get it. It's in there too. But, uh, yeah. So the record is about the first album to give you guys context is about the city that is populated by these animals, like anthropomorphic animals, almost like an animal farm type thing. It was like Zootopia. Yeah, sort of, but so. a lot more fucked up. So the first <laughs> record is about, uh, it's, it's kind of centrals around two characters. One of them is, a person who lives in the town who is a like religious leader and the other one is a dude that used to live in the town that's coming back to warn them and essentially what he's doing it's it's like it's almost like a cult like the members of the city are part of this religious fanatic cult and they think what they do is right and this guy comes to the town in the first record and he's like yo guys you have to stop doing some crazy shit because some insane shit is going to happen if you don't stop doing this religious shit it's not right you know they don't really get too in specifics the first record's kind of hard because it's written in pretty poor english not pretty poor english but rougher english translations so it's kind of like and a lot of it is written from a dialogue perspective so it's hard to exactly tell what's going on but it sounds like what happens is the the town overruns this dude that's coming in and is like, you just got to get out of here. We're going to keep doing our thing, right? 
So 10 years later, the thing that he is warning everybody about is happening on this record. So what's happening on this album is essentially we're back in Mostad and 10 years later, the religious fanatics have gone out of control and they're all these crazy dudes with like claws and shit like, and these giant teeth. And essentially what they're doing is they're like sacrificing people, I believe to like some greater being because they are encouraging. They're basically telling everybody in the town. Yo, if you just do what we say, you're going to reach paradise. We are going to reach a, a paradise. Um, but the interesting part about this album, the one we're talking about today is a lot of what's written in the lyrics conceptually is again about, uh, cent- centers around two characters. The centers around that snake that's in like every picture. And then there's a couple pictures of this big white fluffy dude with a cage on his head. It's about these two guys. And literally it's just about this dude exploring Mastodon because the religious leaders have held his friend who is the, dude with the cage on his head captive so he gets a letter from his friend and the friend is basically like hey i'm alive and being held captive in this city can you come rescue me and the record is about the snake exploring the city of mastodon and as he's doing it you're witnessing certain events that are happening within the city now like the religious set the song brand marked i believe it's the fifth song uh, stand, it means Brandon. It's about this uh, religious kind of like sacrifice slash like ritual they do um, where they're branding all the townspeople and offering blood as like a sacrifice, I believe. Um, but it's just really interesting because it's it's all written like I've I've literally gone so far as to translate all of the lyrics myself mm-hmm. from Swedish to English to try and have a better understanding of what's going on. I think essentially what happens is the snake creature eventually finds his friend. He ends up finding and going up against like a court of these religious leaders that are like, no, you're basically here. Your friend is here and we held him captive because he was going against our religion. That's why we got him captive captive. Now we're going to put you captive because we see you're on his side. So essentially what happens is they, are i even it's not really explained but i believe there's like a death that happens with the snake and the owl they are both killed and their sacrifice actually ends up fulfilling this religious prophecy of the entire city he's reaching in paradise he's in the tree with he's all like on hooks and his yeah. heart is coming and out. he's fucking dead and there's so, like a goose on the on the back <laughs> of a pig and the pigs eat drinking his blood and the goose is trying to get to the heart yeah So essentially it's sort of like these religious fanatics came into this town. They guided the townspeople to get to this point and then they just bounce. And now you can see on the last page, we have the beings of Mostad in here, you know, in paradise. Um, But yeah, I I do think that knowing the concept definitely probably adds a lot to the enjoyment Mm -hmm. factor of said record. Um, But yeah, it's, it's this really just crazy in depth thing. And I always think it's so like, if a band really does something like this is a big thing to do to be like, uh, we're releasing our second full length and it's going to be a concept record basically about what we've already written on our first album. Like it's a hard, I feel like it's a hard sell for a lot of metalheads. It's like when I heard BT band was doing colors too, I wanted to fucking like, you know, not listen to it even faster because the first thing I thought in my head was like, Oh, that was their most successful record. They're just cashing in on it. You know, I'm sure that's not the case. I shouldn't speak ill (laughs) of a record that I haven't heard. So I'm not trying to talk shit by saying that I'm just using that as an example to kind of further this point here that I think a lot of people, um, I don't know. I think the way they pulled, pulled it off was so sick because it's very similar in the sense that, the first record had artwork that was very elaborate. Every song had its own painting, Mm. you know, it's so, and I loved it. I was like, I was in, and I love concept shit when it's done right. And these days it's like, I'm never impressed by concepts. I'm always like, this is reaching it. This is not doing it. This isn't it. But everything on this record just clicked with me. I love the artwork. I love, I have fucking, prints of this like in framed and hung in my fucking apartment like i feel like there's <clears throat> give me a lot of tattoos uh yeah devoted to this album <laughs> i would love i would yeah i've already the artwork about, is so amazing <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy and what's cool is you know the artwork follows along what the, what's happening in the songs which is really cool no it was, um, as you were explaining the concept i'm looking at the artwork yeah yeah no, that's cool and uh, just taking the time to dive in and, and it's just such a fu- it's a very dense album obviously it's way too 
I'm sure both of you guys would agree that it's way too fucking long. It's very long. It's over, it's very, over very 80 long. minutes. It's like 82 minutes or some shit. It's fucking insane. Yeah. And uh, I love that because for me, it's more Viljarda. It's more mm. of a band that I haven't gotten to really dig into for the last 10 years. So I love it. I love the fact that I'm getting a lot of music. And I also know you know, going into it, how heavy conceptually they are as a band. So I'm not shocked that they're pulling a move like this. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, they're giving out a lot of music, you know? Um, and yeah, I guess it's just sort of like, I don't know. I'm going to stop. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this album. You picked it. I know I did pick it, but I'll talk more about it after, but I just want to, I want to know. I want to know. Tell me and be honest. I don't expect, I didn't expect either of you guys to like this really. Um, I didn't hate it. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Didn't love it. Fair. Um, I liked a lot of parts to it. Yeah. Um, but it was just weird. Cause like I listened to it a few times actually, like oh, wow. I had time to do it and like I could never tell when one song would begin and another one would end. Yeah. Cause there's so many similarities throughout the riffs and yep. like, it was my initial reaction was when I first like I don't know how long into the album I was like oh this is uh breakdowns featuring some notes and some weird noises like <laughs> it was really weird like that just kept happening on the album like yeah, that's I was like okay this is like their sound I yeah. guess like I because I didn't know anything about this band sure um other than like the idea that they might be like a gent band I was like this doesn't sound like gent at all right um which is not a bad thing at all like yeah. <laughs> I did like the parts where like they would do some like clean vocals and I wish they did that more. Yeah. I was kind of bummed. Like the few times it happened, I was like, Oh, that was cool. And then it was like Dude. over before I was like, Oh, and what, <laughs> what's funny that you say that is there's only like one clean vocal part on their first record. And I remember thinking that then like, oh, really? why is there not more? So yeah. So to me going in on this, I'm like, there's more clean vocals than ever than before. <laughs> See, but yeah, you're not right, there's not me. a lot. And yeah, I do yeah. agree. And he does try some really like at the end of that song, uh, I believe it's song two on the second disc. So the 12th song is called the meat, trota Hialta, <laughs> which means my tired heart. It ends with this really like cool, like scream singing melody mm -hmm. thing that he's doing. And I'm like, God damn, that's so sick sounding. And I'm like, why does he not do that on the rest of the record? Like, well, yeah, I think mm. my favorite song is vagabond. Okay. And it has, it's not exactly what I would say is clean vocals, but it's more, like a Go Gojira. Yep. Thing. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He and does I, it on that track. I was too. surprised. I mean, not that I didn't like the vocals on the rest of the record. I just was surprised there wasn't more of it. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, I really, I like the vocals on the record. It reminds me, there's a lot of stuff on this record that reminds me of Warforged. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's so funny. funny. I would say the main vocal sound, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of Adrian's vocals. Wow. Sure. Uh, really, concept, I thought of, you're gonna hate this, but I saw really, Randy Blythe at some at some points. <laughs> really, that's cool. Kind of sounded like him at points. I, I was don't like, know. Oh, kind of cool. I figured like the growling style combined with like the the light distortion, it's not quite as distorted as the mm. vocals on voice. I I was like, oh yeah, like the dudes in Warforge probably like listen to this man a bunch. I do. I don't um, like. Well, Max and Alex like him, but Adrian, I don't think really ever listened to this band that really? much. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like not at all. I mean, it's it's not much of like a keyboard heavy thing. Mm -hmm. Although there, there are times where it does, I don't know. There's it almost like, okay, my first impression of this album was not good. Sure. The first time I, I tried listening to it, I was like, Oh God, this is how long, <laughs> how am I going to get through this? It's like born of Osiris, but way darker. And yeah. I mean, I, I don't dislike born of Osiris, but it's there. There's certain guitar tones and certain things, maybe yeah. the keys where I was just like, yeah, they oh. use pod XTs still. To this day, to get all those tones, the there's tones no fine. way that they're using that on this album. They might be. No, I mean, the guitar, yeah. the isn't the one that was using the I'll stone? You, I gotta cab send you or whatever. Videos. I gotta send you videos of it. But there's playthroughs where the dude explains on certain songs about like his whammy automated whammy shift pitching. But yeah, then he says like all these tones were essentially made on a Pod XT. What the fuck? Yeah, that's like his rig. That's like the gent. So wait, rig, what about dude. that giant stone fucking cab? I, maybe they reamped through that cab. They I, must have. I don't know. You've seen that, right? Yeah, Grand yeah, I have. Cat I didn't realize Day. it was associated with this album or Viljarda. But yeah. I think I wasn't I think on I their sent you. Like, I Instagram. It was on their Instagram and Top Floor Studios where they tracked the drums for yeah. this. Is that Buster's studio or is that somebody? No, okay. it's this dude in Europe. I forget. I think it's in Sweden, but he does like he does a bunch of Swedish shit there. I believe he does some Dark Tranquility. And have you guys ever heard of that band Evergrey? They're like a 
power metal y prog rock mm-hmm. band, prog I've metal heard, band. I think I've heard the name. Yeah. Oh. He does they do all their records there and shit. I will um, also say that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the production though. Like, yeah, that was nice. When thing it like kicked say. in, I was it, like, ooh. I was like, me, all right. It all kept right. me engaged when I was at first just kind of like, oh man, this is dragging. Like tempo, not even just uh not even just the length, but like the tempos of stuff. Sure. I mean, I, I don't listen to, and I wouldn't call it doom metal at all, but I don't listen to any metal that's this slow that isn't like, I mean, it's like slower than Black Sabbath a lot of the time. Yeah, I know. know. It's, it's like, I, I don't really listen to stuff like this. So I was kind of like, okay, wow, yeah, this snare drum not- sounds really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I've watched a couple a couple uh, videos with Buster, kind of him, and he's he's like a genius metal producer. For oh, sure. yeah. And and I think that spills over. He's also a great guitar player, even though he plays a lefty, but he plays a righty guitar Gross. upside down. Uh-huh. Like I know that shit, but I didn't know the concept <laughs> of this album. I feel kind of bad about that. But I mean, yeah, it it started to grow on me after a while. Like after you know doing the thing where I didn't just sort of start the record from the beginning and get all the way through. Kind of starting, uh-huh. you know, starting with the 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 single that you picked, like Heart Smear. And like mm-hmm. I said, I ended up really really enjoying Vagabond, and I really enjoyed a song that I can try to pronounce, but it's like. Give it to me. Really long. Let's see. Uh, oh, let's hear it. Detta dromars skolta el sloha till umars nasta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nailed, nailed <laughs> that's that's that I song. Think, I don't know. Oh, Swedish, I should have sent so, it to you guys man. before I this. Tried. I'll send it to both of you guys. There's a video. The guitar player just did a playthrough. I really, of that I song. really dug it. Yeah, it's oh, an awesome cool. track. I, and it's, that out, I mean, yeah. I don't want to call it a deep cut. It's not one of the first songs. No, it's on the second yeah. half of the record. I remember like um, Passage Noir or whatever. And I, I, that, yeah, I like that. Oh man, cool I, think, I think that there is, you know, like you said, it is too long. It should probably be two different albums. I mean, I wouldn't. Maybe the concept wouldn't work. Sure, but I think a lot of that is. I, th- I believe there's at least three different people writing the songs yeah. instrumentally, and they they write like the whole song. Because I listened yeah. to like I think it was the uh, the URM I actually think it's podcast. two dudes that write it, but I could be. I think incorrect. Buster writes some shit too, though. He like, might. Maybe it's just riffs, but he was saying that a lot of the time when they collaborate, it's um, they write the complete songs. So whoever wrote the song tracks all the guitars. Okay, it was that more about sense. the production of, oh, of their band, and not necessarily just with this album, but just in general their approach to it. And yeah, I mean, I just think there were times when I really liked it, and times where I was just like, "Damn it, this should just be instrumental." Or like, wait, this is still the same song. You know, it was, it was, uh, yeah. It was, it was hard at times for me to totally get it. And if maybe I had been more involved, like obviously the lyrics, I was trying to comprehend. Yeah. Them. So I did want to interject this too when you had mentioned it earlier, how how you had mentioned that it seemed like you know you're hearing on in a big part of Iljara is music is they repurpose riffs conceptually along with the story. So there's certain riffs that on makes- this record. So much more sense. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah. There's certain characters on this record that have riffs or motifs that you hear them. like that. We are like, you would hear between songs that like plinky sound. I don't know what you would call it. But like <laughs> that weird guitar effect that it's you hear. Yeah. 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 And it's keyboard. like, I believe that's a certain character. Then there's a certain melody that you hear in like four of the songs that I want to say is like the antithesis or the uh, antagonistic character in the story. Um, but that's why you're hearing a lot of these songs. Mm-hmm. Like you're hearing a lot of this repetition. It's because like a lot of it is like different reflections on actions that a certain character is making mm-hmm. unconceptually in said songs. So there's a lot of like repurposed shit and I love that stuff, but I could uh, see, yeah, I get that. Yeah. You know, I could see how it's hard. Like, cause this is a hard record to really listen to. Like if you really are going into it blind, you know, because there's, it's so it's very dense. challenging. Yeah. It is very challenging. And there's a lot of, you know, like you're saying, it's really slow. I feel like a lot to really get into it. It's like, it's almost got like a hypnotic quality with certain songs, especially like the second half of that vagabond song well, that's where like they the kind of do that aspect to it. Yeah. Kind of oh, like yeah. this record is more I mean, than they've ever been before. I started to kind of get it there, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's also just, you know, that's, that's hard. On listener and also <clears throat> i mean i hate to be i don't mind trying to be the genre police is this a death metal album <laughs> i don't know i don't really that know means that i can pick him a sugar album next time we do this you album. can't oh yeah i mean i don't think i'm going to because we've all probably talked about Mashuga enough but i was just <laughs> like oh okay one. i guess this is death metal you know just i just on, did it just to fit it in here oh i know you, wanted, you wanted us to listen to it yeah I, I appreciate that i, don't, I'm not I mean what other genre would you genre I, yeah i don't know progressive what you, metal what do you call Mashuga? <laughs> you know it yeah. used to be called a death metal band like in the 90s because right. no one else to call it yeah. there's no gent there was 
There are some progressive death metal, metal here. Dream theater. Yeah. Well, well yeah, yeah, it's not super melodic. I mean, the riffs are really a lot of the time they're kind of atonal, which yeah. I which I do enjoy. I remember you talking about this on a prior podcast and getting Bill to listen to it and being like, Oh, there's a lot of Bill isms on this record. Yeah, I feel like there are. There's <laughs> a lot expecting of Bill more parts. whammy pedal. Yeah, I was yeah. expecting I know, more whammy. There's, some, but yeah, there's, definitely there's some, some good wacky noises. Yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah. There's some shit there. Well, there's that song, that song you had mentioned, there is pitch shifted whammy all over it. Like there's a playthrough he does and he literally has it as like a like subtitles where he's like, where he's like doing showing it. all the pitches that That's it's so automatically funny. changing. I to. think they program it. Like I was yeah. talking to the other day That's about the how it. They, they, <laughs> run, they run it all off a of Reaper. Yeah, yeah. Even though like Buster's, you know, he could use Pro Tools, he could use anything, but he's just like Reaper is the best for our live show because it doesn't crash. Yeah, that's and what it we was use. a lot Make of it Pro was Tools. about the automated whammy stuff because he was just like, yeah, we would be looking over our pedal boards the whole show, and then you know if you have more than one guitar player doing that, it's like it's not. Which gonna podcast happen. was this on? I think it was a URM podcast, like a recent one. No, it was Riff Hard. It's the same. It's like. A.L. Levy and John Brown did this podcast. Was it a recent called, episode or an older episode? Oh, uh, maybe like came out like a month or two ago. Oh shit. I want to hear like it. It's not like this week. You should definitely check it out. Yeah. Cause he, he talks about more generally about the band, but obviously you said he's a newer member. Yeah. He produced this record and like there's videos too. There's free URM videos. I watched one of them, uh, with Buster. He, he's really, he's a really musical metal mixer. So, you know, a genre that's so technical, like, They'll like listen to a snare drum and hear like a, a note in it and sing the note and find it and either like EQ it out or accentuate it. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, he seems really, really awesome. And I do love the way the drums sound on this, Me on this too. record. Yeah. It's it just something about the huge, the tempos of a lot of the songs. Like if it, it, it's, it's pretty cohesive. I'll give mm-hmm. them that. And there's parts of it that remind me of car bomb where it's so like, it's slow, but it's like kind of like techie and like herky jerky. That's yeah, is actually really cool. And I get why you like it. And like, I don't listen to as much like, you know, more like do me hardcore, like the newer Casey strain stuff. Sure. Although I have appreciated some of it, you know? Yeah. Like oh yeah. Your guys love of that stuff. But I'm like, man, this is uh, yeah. I just wish it was like half as long. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. Hard. Some of the songs too, you know, when they have like a clean breakdown, I'm like, oh, this is the end or this is the beginning of another song. Um, yeah, I don't have any, I don't really have anything, anything else. To say about <laughs> That's okay. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you got some mileage out of it, you know, and I'm glad that you were able to like, I don't know, listen to it. You know, I don't expect you guys to ever want to listen to this record again because of how much of a fucking undertaking it <laughs> I is. I mean, I could like, listen to it again for sure. Yeah. I just might not be able to focus from front to back. Yeah. I hear you. It's a any album. I mean, there's a reason why most records in human history the most iconic records are not more than an hour yeah you know it's um, like it's you're really it's really hard especially when it's extreme music yeah which this is if you're not it's not strictly death metal it's definitely it's not super melodic it's not easy mm-hmm. i uh i picked that song heart smear uh as the checkout song for a handful of reasons one because it ends with a motif that's that's a good example of a motif that's reused in a couple songs but it ends with that giant like breakdown part but underneath it is that clean melody that we first hear at the end of the second song that comes back in a couple different songs as well um i wish i had another week with it I yeah we, we kind of condense it into this. i think i'm gonna listen to it again yeah, just after dude. having talked to you it's about fucking it. about <laughs> time like time. yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah, the the clean melody at the end of the second song that the singer is singing, he's doing like an acapella thing underneath mm. like the groove. That's the melody that plays at the end of Heart Smear. But I like Heart Smear because it's a shorter song. It's like a, one of the shorter songs on the record. And it covers a lot of ground, I think, of what they do. It starts off, you get, you know, the mid-tempo type pacing and then leads it to more of this weird part. And then I love in that song, Heart Smear. I love the last breakdown because it just sounds like you're literally dying, but I love the part that leads into it because the way I describe it to my girlfriend, Sam, when I get way too high and make her listen to it with me <laughs> is like, they do that. We're like, and it's like, it just sounds like you're starting up a car that doesn't want to start. It's like out of tune guitar. It's like bending out of time with the rest of the song. And I'm just like, this is like the heart. Like when you're, just at the right amount of high it's like the hardest shit in the world it just makes you want to get out of your car you know, and punch another I, car i drank like, a beer when i was listening to this yesterday yeah i don't think i got high once when i was 
Oh man, I, the fir- the day I so the I day thought this- of, I thought about it, but I don't smoke weed every day anymore. So I'm like, I, I don't know. I was just kind of like, I, it didn't happen. I do smoke weed every day, <laughs> and the, I got my copy of this record the day before it came out because I pre-ordered a cop one of my copies on Amazon. And that night, I got in my car and I got brought the budsy. You know, got I heard. I heard on the last yeah, the last got podcast. torched, and then just <laughs> listen to this whole thing. Fucking, I was like, I'm gonna do this front to back. I knew it was gonna suck. I knew it was gonna be brutal, and it sure was. But it was just like everything I wanted and more. Like a- a- everything I could have asked for as a fan of this band and what they do. It's like they came back tenfold more than I ever could have expected. And I'm a hard sell sometimes with that shit. So I'm very uh, enthralled by it. And a fun fact, the song Mastodon's national song on this, there's a Mastodon's national song on the first record. This album, this song, cause like on the first album, it's like an interlude. That's like one riff. This album, every riff, almost every riff in that song is a repurposed riff from songs from the first record. It's like a fan service delight, dude. Oh, interesting. Like the first riff when it kicks in like dun 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 like the electric part, that's the first riff of the first song on the first record. And then it it's it's got all these pieces of melodies from the first album repurposed on this, but like rewritten and shit. It's just like, if you love that first record, when I heard the song, I was like, holy fuck this is like insane it's just ins- it's like a medley mm. of the first album and then it ends with the national song from the last record but like in a different key and heavier mm. and it's just like this is so fucking like how how do you do that how do you like <laughs> i couldn't imagine like some of the nuts most iconic metal bands doing anything like that like if metallica had a a song on like a new record that had like throwbacks to like just all the friend, old yeah. right <laughs> like iron maiden doing that or i mean it's you know or like the, the more modern version i don't know like a black diet yeah. murder i can't imagine that actually working yeah but that's uh, an interesting I- idea and i mean obviously we me and bill had no clue yeah and zero idea <laughs> i know like, that's the thing that's looking, why i wanted to share this looking with back at this it's it's this one of those bands or albums where it's like i wish i had I don't know, like a bunch more albums by them, not just by them, but other bands in this realm to get me to this point, right? Where you're at, you know, because that was the other thing that bummed me out was I was like, oh man, Jason like loves this fucking album, <laughs> and I want to like it too, and I just like couldn't get there as well. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, I think like yeah, if I and this is like all metal though, like I feel like sure. it's just you you can't just jump into like a lot of bands like you yeah. do need to work your way up to these things like i was telling somebody the other day like how when i first started like dillinger escape plan i was like this uh-huh. is fucking noise and stupid and bullshit i was like <laughs> i don't get it and then Damn. after a while yeah. listening to other stuff and i was like and i went back and i was like oh no i i get yeah, it and now. you love it yeah. and it's like oh yeah the first album is like one of my favorites yeah. like yeah <laughs> it's weird and like same thing with this i just don't think i have enough bands under my belt That's fair to fully appreciate like what's going on and definitely. then hearing you explain the concepts really cool actually and like yeah. that's why i think i'm definitely probably gonna go back and listen to this again that's with that in the back why of my we head. should talk about these albums before we do this podcast and <sighs> having a rule against no i like that well that's that's the hard i mean that that's the sell for me on this mm-hmm. record honestly it's it's a record in my opinion it was a record that was made out of out of like just the sake of art and doing something that they wanted to do 100%. You yeah, know, this oh is yeah. not a record that was made to sell a ton oh, of copies. Yeah, it's, in mm-hmm. Swedish, it's an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Long. It's like, it's like the antithesis of what every label will tell you to do on a record. Almost. Oh yeah. Like, Definitely. yeah, it's just like, Oh, okay. But good for them. That's yeah. awesome. And I love, I just love the fact that there are like, a collective of like four guys at least <laughs> that are able to agree on such a certain amount of level to have something like this mm-hmm. really come out and see the light of day. Cause it's just insane hearing like, and just seeing this final product. Cause to me, it's like, wow, like, you know, that 10 year wait, it makes a lot of sense because they like crossed a lot of fucking T's and dotted a lot of eyes on this album. Just like with, Lower you know, shades. yeah, with just like a, or yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, they fucking, crushed it in my opinion an and american i just think they would never do it right huh? like, obviously an american band would never do it no they would never i don't think release so an album in swedish first of all no. <laughs> also uh, you know making it so long they're, they're, they're on man. century media right yes they are i remember you saying that i think on, on one of the last podcasts and, and you said they only did 200 of the double vinyls 
Yeah, they've done more mm-hmm. since. More though. since. Okay. Yeah, they've been. That I the and they did initial two hundred. I ended up getting my vinyl on the second. How much did it cost? Run my vinyl was expensive. It was up in the forty dollar range, like forty five, forty. Yeah, eight. that's probably another reason because it probably costs a lot to make. Cause it's yep. multiple records. The art. The, I mean, the CD booklet's crazy. That yeah. CD probably costs you know around ten bucks to make. I don't know yeah. what they're selling CDs for, but considering how inter- you know you have the digi pack and the non digi pack, I do. I do. <laughs> I think I saw the the digi pack booklet. If I'm correct, because it was not glossy. But yes. If yeah, you want to see like, the jewel case one, you're more than uh, welcome to. No, I'm saying it's, it's got to be an investment for the label. And yeah, the- big time. And Century Media is is now doing this weird thing where I've noticed where they have been doing like digi packs and jewel cases for bands. Like they did that for Vitriol, where Europe. And you could pre-order in America a DigiPack version of that CD, but the version that was released in stores was all uh, jewel cases. Can I can mm-hmm. I interject a weird thing? Yes, because I you brought up Vitriol. Chasen is the drummer of that band now. I Get know. the fuck! Out. I had no well, idea. He's on tour with them. I don't know if he's well, in the band. Did you just, tell me whatever, that? And I forget just it. Currently for their tour. <laughs> yeah, I just found Damn, that out I yesterday. About that. So, I think I'm gonna. I'm trying to get him to come on our show. Please. I think he's. I think he'll be yeah, down. That guy has little, an uh, insane legacy. <laughs> I was actually supposed to go out to that show. He was. I was. They gonna just go played see recently. Yeah, right? last weekend. Where at? Joliet, the Forge. I couldn't wow. get out there because of a bunch of shit going on. Yeah, oh, I had a bunch shit. of family shit going down. But I was gonna try and go out to that actual show and, and just chill with Chase because I haven't seen him in so long. But uh, we were hitting each other up. I had a bunch yeah. of family shit going just on. Just a little so side note because I had no idea. I don't think you yeah. told me. I, seen I might have not. Yeah, I might have not. But yeah, he's been he's you been doing this tour with them. I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, but I do want to get him on just to have him on and talk. It would be It'd so be sick cool. to talk with him. I'm sure, that guy's got stories. Yeah, but yeah, Century Media is doing that thing. But yeah, the vinyl the vinyl is interesting. So I got the vinyl in the other day, and it's like a it's a gatefold that comes with a poster, and the poster is like has all the the paintings on it. And like the gatefold itself just has the lyrics in it. So I was hmm. kind of hoping for a giant, and I don't know why I'd expected it, but sometimes you'll get a vinyl that's got a giant vinyl, like booklet, the size of the vinyl. And I was like, Oh my God, that would be incredible. Yeah, But no, they that's didn't go much. that far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a bit much considering everything they already did for this. So, you know, I get it, but, and it's cool to have, I don't know the post. I was going to bring the poster here. It's like the, the pieces I have framed, but it's on one sheet so it's like if you were to hang that up it's one side or the other uh yeah. okay. so i'm just gonna keep it in there as a uh, viewing nice thing anyway yeah i'm on i'm on all gears for this fucking record dude i fucking love it i listen to it probably a song from this once a day since it's come out it used to be i would listen to the record probably once a day but i'm kind of at the point with this album where i i pretty much just skip around and like mm-hmm. i'll start it at different spots and that's it's that was your favorite my favorite song? Yeah. Uh, man, it's so hard to say because it changes so much. I just thought this. you had one because you listen to one song a day. So um, maybe you had one you gravitated towards. I do like Heart Smear a lot. That's still up in like my top five. I really like... Uh, man, there's so many good ones. Toxin I love. I love Passage Noir. I love Mastodon's national song. On the second half, I love... Meet Trota Harta. Uh, Vagabond is really sick. I like Phantom Assassin a lot. Um, I like Just the name, last song like, a lot. Of the song. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I get it. But yeah. I would say, yeah. It's, I don't have a favorite. I don't, it's, also it's, too, uh, it's too hard for me to pick. But Heart yeah. Smear, I'm going to say for now, because that song is a good ass slapper, I feel. I and mean, it's just like a very nice, short and sweet, perfect example of like, yo here's a song that's got zero structure and we're giving it to you. And it's like <laughs> relatively short. But I do like the use of samples on this too, like mm-hmm. all of the environmental, you know, like you'll, the song will stop and it sounds like I'm in a swamp or something. And I'm like, where am I? You know, <laughs> that shit is so cool. I have love they done that. music videos for anything not, on this album yet? No, mm-hmm. they have not. They've done, they did a couple of music videos for the last record, I think, but yeah. I don't think they've done any music videos for this. They did one actually, but it was just like an interpretive dancer. Oh. Yeah. So... <laughs> That's wow, fair. that reminds me. I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, uh, but I just finished Dune. Oh, I did. I watched it this week I, too. Yeah, I, I, me and me and uh, me and Lacey watched part of it the night before and part of it today. Yeah, and that fucking the way they walk in the sand, two step in the shy halud. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Spoil you spoiled the whole movie. Yeah, duh. Now don't you say anything else? 
<laughs> yeah, you got to do it so you can't get detected, man. Let's put on, it's hard uh, out here. Well, I wasn't sure if I was going to like because it doesn't really happen. Like they mentioned it earlier in the movie, but they never it doesn't quite happen until later. It. And I was like, are they going to actually? Is it going to be like this crazy dance? And I'm like, no, it's not really. Yeah, like, pretty somebody. Who is it? Oh, Al is like, it's basically the people you see walking out of the liquor store over by my shop. I was like, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> wow. I liked it. I like Dune. Oh, I liked it. I was just annoyed by how abruptly it ended. Yeah. I did not expect to like it, but I liked it a lot. Yeah. The ending. I was just, oh, it's over. Like, well, you know, when I wanted more. When you, especially because we divided it in half. You can kind of see Dude, where you so are. And you're more. like, wait, there's so much more to the story. And then it's like, oh, well, I guess it's just going to end. And, yeah. Part two. And, and it also, you know, so much of it. Reminds you guys read me the book? It's long as fuck. I've read the no, Wikipedia about part, the book. It's a big part <laughs> of the reason great. why I just watched it for the first time because she wanted to reread the book. And I was like, all right, you got to get on it before <laughs> it's off of streaming. Yeah. Uh, so. I read the book. I have the book. I read a couple of books in the series. I want to say the a first three. Them, yeah. There's a shitload of them. Well, his the author's son started writing them after he passed away, and I think people still make Dune books. There might mm-hmm. still be some that are made, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the movie did definitely a good job of not making it like jam packed with like the original one yeah, did, and, and the tail end. Like, it was just like we got to dump all this shit. Lot, there. There's a lot of like goofy shit in that book. Where oh, I'm it's sure. Just, like you look but at it, and I'm like, man, this sounds written? like Dr. Seuss shit. Yeah. Like, and, but it's like, they make it look so dark in the movie. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, cause when I read Dune, I was like, this is some dorky ass. <laughs> oh yeah. 100%. Like, some real science fiction shit. But then it's like, you see this movie and you're like, Oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, my dune yeah <laughs> I love, I love and then uh the fucking Stellar, uh, skateboard yeah the sardu car or whoever and the dude's chanting like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good impression yeah, it should i was say, wondering it was how they pretty solid in, in post and audio it's probably it's probably you. <laughs> yeah it just hit me up i like, also did not really bowl, Jason, realize that uh, it was like javier bardem i was like Who's this fucking like <laughs> yeah, dollar like him, store Javier Bardem? And either. then it was like, have you ever done? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize him. I did. It's did you? I, yeah. Not right away. I like, recognized it his wasn't until I was like, is me that? too. That's I, why I was like, oh, it sounds like him. Well, he got the fake like, hmm. blue eyes because he's a Fremen. Yeah, it's one of them Fremen. Free man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I I don't know. I never read the book, but I was like, oh yeah, that's real clever. Fremen, I know. Fremen. Free man without an E. What There's no about? way they'll know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys, I'm gonna pee my pants. All right, go, oh, go ahead, pee. We'll we can keep into, talking about uh, Dune. Yeah, because we gotta talk about his record. <laughs> oh yeah, you're next, and then you're last. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I I want to see that movie in theaters. I saw it streaming, but yeah, me too. Yeah, I do kind of want to see it, it in theaters. Visually, too. it is amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. it is a beautiful film. Yeah. Like and the set pieces and like the the scale of everything is just like insane. Yeah. Like, I just like, Oh my God. Like every scene, everything is just giant. Yeah. <laughs> was, I gotta say, cool. Batista plays that role much better than sting did. So that's who he's, I was trying to figure out. Cause I haven't seen the old, like the OG oh, one in yeah. so long. So Batista is playing the part that sting played. Yeah. That's crazy. Playing the Baron's nephew. Way better. Oh, way better. <laughs> Although, better. who doesn't want to see Batista in the weird underwear thong <laughs> thing? Like that we got this thing. Right? <laughs> Yeah. No, it was cool. And then what's his name? Yeah, Skarsgård is ever so menacing. As, yeah, as uh, Baron Harkon, Harkonnen. Awesome casting yeah. on that part, for sure. Yeah, it really did do a good job. I did not, and then I realized who it was. I'm like, oh, it's that guy and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, he did a great yeah, job, especially guy. with all that fucking makeup on. Like, yeah, Jesus Christ. Insane. And they made him look fucked up, too, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Well, he's going to be even more book. fucked up when he comes back. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it was yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I, I was telling I was, yeah that okay. scene with the obsidian bath he was in, so cool, love very that cool. Shit. Yeah, um, I saw it with Brian Rosie. I was telling, him, I was like, yeah, as far as the OG one goes, like I've tried to watch it in the past, and every time I just fucking fall asleep to it. <laughs> I like the OG. I haven't watched it all the way through since I was a little kid, and that was like the only time I've ever done it. And every other time, I just keep fucking falling asleep yeah. through it. Well, like uh, amongst Lynch stands, most of them won't even talk about it, but right. I think it's fine. I mean, it's like, I don't think it's bad. I mean, I understand the issues with it and it's a bummer. I mean, it, look, at that. You know. <laughs> look at what they're capable of doing now and look at what they did then. Right. You know, it's just like, you gotta choose your battle. Yeah, you know? for real. Yeah. <laughs> you do got to pick your battles. I just feel like it doesn't make 
I mean, I kind of want to watch the old one now, but I kind of I kind of want to too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just now having a better understanding of yeah. Dune again. Let's see. I think then I'm like, I'll start watching it, and then I'll be like, why don't I watch Mulholland Drive again instead? And then I'll do that, <laughs> or like, why don't I watch Lost Highway again instead? Or like, oh, for did the you? first time you watched Man, Lost what Highway? a yeah. sick fucking movie! I'm in your ass. <laughs> I. Uh... <laughs> That guy is sick, dude. Fuck that shit. Watch more David Lynch and and maybe I'll get it more. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was cool how weird it was, but big fan. My girlfriend didn't like it so much. Yeah. She's like, why'd you pick this movie? I was like, I don't know. Sick. I just heard it was good. Lucy, it's fucking cool. It's got the perfect drug in it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, speaking, speaking of, of the music, perfect drug, is it my turn? Yeah. It's your turn. You're perfect. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, <laughs> theys of all genders, sunless. Zims and zers. This album is called Ilem. I mispronounced you got it. it. I mispronounced it, is it to the guitar player at the merch table at the show, and he just, corrected me. Just so it's your called name's Danny Rodriguez. Ilem. No, I, I thought it was I thought it was Yelem or something like almost like Flem. That's whatever my you know. You, you name a record, something like this. I just gave him some practice. He's gonna have to explain it to every person everywhere forever. So yeah, there's a Dark Fortress record called Ilem. So luckily, I knew the title. That's going how into you knew. It. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> right. then hmm. the chorus of that song, he's like, <laughs> I think a lot of people, it's I a mean, black metal band. If, so. you're, if you're from the Midwest and you're really into technical and, you know, distant death metal, you might know this band, but a lot of people probably don't. They're a three piece. They're from Minneapolis. Uh, they have one full length before this called Araka. And then I believe there's like a, a demo or an EP or something before it. Um, the, uh, <laughs> Dude, the band the, that the three of us play in Roman Ring will meet man. a few, a a few a years time. back. Roman Ring, we we played with Gorguts and you want a piece? It's no, I'm cheese. I'm let him talk. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Go on. I wasn't even laughing. I was just like, dude's gonna I need some food. It just uh, threw me the fuck off because it came out of nowhere from my direction. It was just like pizza. I was like, all right. Anyway. Uh, sorry, Nate. No, it's okay. Uh I was gonna say I know that our band Roman Ring played with them. And we opened for Gorguts and they were added to the show. Um, uh, I guess more last minute than us. Yeah, that's why the name man. sounds familiar. They're really okay. good. And, this album was really sick too. Um, you know, I, my paths have crossed with these guys through playing in Minneapolis with Immortal Bird and uh, really nice people. You know, I, I didn't mm-hmm. want to, I feel like it's not breaking our, our sort of written, unwritten rule about, you know, people we know and doing their records. Oh, no, like, whatever. Fine. I mean, if anything, Sunless could, could use the help and just people you know, knowing about them because they're mm-hmm. so awesome. And I mean, I'm not going to say, I don't really have anything bad to say about them or this record. Uh, they put it out on October 29th, which I think is the same day uh, Ark Spire's album came out. I don't know what day the Viljarda album It was. Came out. It was it, so they all came out on the same no, day? No, wait, Viljarda was earlier, but it was but, the same okay. day as Ark Spire and, and a lot of albums came the same out that day. day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so yeah, I, I was actually, <laughs> the reason how I, I, why I ended up mispronouncing it to Lucas, the guitar player at the show, was because I wanted to buy it. And it was, I believe it was the twentieth when they uh, they played with Piron and Imperial Triumphant. Ah, uh, okay, that's why the name was so fresh in my mind too. And, and I was like, okay, yeah, that was actually my first time back at Reggie's uh, since since COVID hit, and it was a really really awesome show. I mean, they I, every band was great. I mean, I think it was probably the best Piron set I've seen, um, and they were incredible. I think they 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 were probably like the stars of that show in a lot of ways. But honestly, Sunless blew me the fuck away. I mean, just hearing them in that room, their their tones live, so great. As far as I know, they only played one song off this record. Mm-hmm. It was probably either the first song, Spiraling, Spiraling Into the Unfathomable, or um, the single, which I think was Forgotten Remnants of Life. I actually don't have that written down. <laughs> um, right down now. But it was, uh, it was really, really awesome and kind of just i mean not that i really needed a reminder um that this band is just incredible and so i I chose this record partially as a homework assignment for myself (laughs) because i was worried i wouldn't listen to it otherwise or i wouldn't listen to it enough you know it's like i think as we get older maybe we're we're jaded or maybe it's just me like i don't get as pumped to listen to death metal records when they first come out i'm like oh yeah i'll 
I'll go see that band live. I mean, it, well, this is more of like a 2021 thing um, as opposed to a 2020 thing. Oh, I'll just go see them live and it'll be fine. And I'll see if I like it. And, and they are an incredible live band. I mean, for a three piece, they really, uh, they really shine. And uh, this record is great. I mean, I, I'm glad that I chose it. Um, yeah, I mean, it sort of falls into the, the dissonant death metal thing, you know, not to pigeonhole them too much, but if you're a fan of like the newer Gorguts or Ulcerate or Artificial Brain, Piran too, to an extent, even though Piran's a little more out there and in, in, you know, left field, uh, you'll love this record. And I really loved it, man. I, I think that uh, their, their drummer is a new guy. I haven't met him, so I actually don't know his name. I probably could have looked that up, but uh, Lucas, the guitar player, and Mitch, the bass player. Like I guess that I met a couple of times. I wouldn't say I know super well. Uh, I did meet Lucas years ago on tour accidentally <laughs> like he was uh we were staying with someone and he happened to be this guy's roommate yeah <laughs> him and i ended up just nerding out on technical death metal and i'm like oh you're a really cool person like maybe i'll never see you again but maybe i will <laughs> is that kind of thing um a bill i'm gonna just take this from you because i feel like you want to say it they have more hair between like lucas and mitch at least than like <laughs> A five piece band. Like Lucas's <laughs> hair is twice as long as mine. Oh yeah. Mitch's yeah. dreads uh touch the ground. So if you have seen them, like you might remember that. I don't know. <laughs> um But yeah, this album, I mean it's just uh Those boys be looking homeschooled, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> man? <laughs> I don't, I don't actually know. They look like their mama ain't giving them no haircuts. They look like them home. Yeah, home school. Those boys be looking home school. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. I think this record's sick. No, that's okay. I mean, I, I guess maybe people that are just listening, if they're not watching, can see that, you know, Jason's hungry. He's eating pizza. I'm so fucking hungry, man. This was such a good move. Um,. To the people that don't know this, I had rehearsal right before this, so I've been here all day. Um, but yeah, man, I definitely would, because like I first, put, I know Sunless, I have their first record, so I knew what I was getting into, where I was, I had, I kind of, I never really paid that much attention to this band, I, I'm very much aware of who they are. I've listened to the first record a couple times, and I thought it was cool, but very standard, uh, gore guts, dissonant, like, yo, you want a hook? Nope, but <laughs> I feel like on this, because I put this record on, you know, listening to the first song and I'm like, all right, I think I know what I'm getting into. It's like one of these bands were normally, and I like this type of death metal, like, you know, the very dissident kind. Sometimes I think it could be hard to listen to for a full record, but I love how short this record is. It's less just under 40 minutes. So it's a nice quick listen. And I love how the fact that all of the songs are like, minus the last one are fairly like you know easy to get through you know it's not like i'm here for 10 minutes on a song it's not like you're buckling your seatbelt for an ulcerate <laughs> record you know it's yeah. like yeah oh wait a minute there's like a lot more going on here than that and uh you know there's a lot i do think there are certain catchy parts on a lot of these songs there was a sick i like the second half of the of the first song there's a bunch of shit in the unraveling of arcane past i really enjoyed there was a uh there's this melodic section in the fourth song, Atramentus, Atramentus, that I really thought was cool because I was like, wait a minute, is that a melody here? Like, did they shoehorn <laughs> a, a melody in here? And I love that because it was so accentuated by the rest of the song that it really caught me. And I was like, damn, that's fucking cool. And I would really, really, really think it. W I would, I would like to see them go in that direction in the future of like a little bit more juxtaposition because I do love that. Like, and I did really, that's probably my favorite song on the record, but I do really like the last song a lot, the molding axioms of the metaphysical. There's a really cool, um, cause I feel like there are blasts on this record, but a lot of it is very like the drummer is just going ham. Like well, it's kind of mid, more mid tempo. Like it, yeah. he, he follows the riffs a lot. Like my favorite song is actually, uh, forgotten like the, in the quote, Remnants of, Rem life remnants of life because it's more of a banger and it's more fast and also yeah. the bass playing is amazing it, it like almost is like led more by mitch's bass playing than the guitar mm -hmm. uh but yeah it, it, a lot of the songs aren't that fast and and the first song spiraling into the unfathomable i actually feel like for this genre it the riff like the i don't know if it's like the, it's the first riff or whatever uh -huh. is kind of catchy 
And it yeah. sort of lays the groundwork for a lot of their stuff where like, if you really sit there and you analyze it, they have a lot of riffs, you know, and I, I do this a little bit in immortal bird on the only guitar player where you try to use the full range of the guitar. So like you have a riff that goes like chugs down low and then you'll have like some screechy, like kind of high thing. And a lot of songs do that. And sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. I mean, I'm speaking from my own experience, yeah. but I feel like when they do it, it always works because of the way the rhythm section fills it out. Whenever the guitar goes up high, mm-hmm. um, I don't think there are any guitar harmonies in this whole record. There might be <laughs> somewhere, but it is, it is very much true to being a three piece. Band, yeah. Even though the guitars are doubled. Um, yeah, there's like in that, in that first song, the drum parts that, that go along with the outro, there are a lot of drum parts on this record where it is very much a drum interpretation of the guitar part, yeah. which I think is what you're getting at. Yes. It's not just, let me just hold this beat down or let me just blow yeah. it in 16th notes. So yeah, that's, it's very cool. Yeah. There was a lot of that. And I, 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 ex- this from you. I enjoyed <laughs> the, uh, oh sick. I was going to, Ooh, be careful. Don't spill it. Pizza. Yeah. You got to lift it. <laughs> I'm going to hit it too, but, uh, Rubber? I'm going to watch you hit it. Yeah. It's, uh, <sighs> You know, it's one of those records where, to me, it just sounds like, oh, this is probably what it would sound like if I saw them live. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's very, super very fucking stripped raw down. Sound. Yeah. It actually sounded better. Live? Original. I believe that. Really? I bet it does sound better. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where I'm like, you're going to get this performance when you see mm-hmm. it. That's fair. I, I mean, maybe it's because I was seeing it, but I felt like it sounded better. I felt like the drums were punchier. i take the one for right now. Um, and- I know. It Man was could dream. It was really. <laughs> Sorry. I, I actually just I hope wanted that's to, the I thumbnail just, for this episode. Yeah. I just wanted to do that in rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you, the drums are a little more punchy. Obviously, they're probably doing some gating because it's live. Um, but their tones. I mean, uh, Mitch and Lucas, man, they and they're both running two amps at once. Um, the vocals are probably like a little more present in the live mix. Which I don't think is a bad thing. I mean, I understand Lucas is, does, I think, all the vocals. And, and on the record, I kind of get that, like, they don't want to make it the focal point. You know, it's, yeah. it's it doesn't go along as much <clears throat> with the style of this type of songwriting. But it is kind of cool to to hear that more in addition to hearing, like, the guitar and bass tones transferred really, really well live. Mm-hmm. And that was just, it was such a great show, just seeing those, those three Hell yeah. things. I mean, I... I guess I should also say that Huntsman was great too, but it, it, it didn't really fit into the whole like dissonant death metal mold yeah. of things, which is why I didn't mention them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really, I can't say enough about how much I love the bass tone. Uh, Mitch, I mean, I didn't get to talk to him at that show. I feel kind of bad uh, because he's seen my band in, in Minneapolis a few times and just been really, really sweet and, and kind. I mean, maybe we were actually good, but I always tell people are like just nice. They're like, oh, good set, or like, oh, you played really well. Um, I think as far as yeah, I think I said my favorite song is Forgotten. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my uh, another one I really liked is before that the Flesh Particle Amalgamation. Uh, the first minute just sounds straight up like Gorguts, and I know they probably get like at least like newer Gorguts. Yeah, they get that comparison probably too much, and I feel bad for doing it. But it that's the moment on the record where I'm like this is maybe why this happens to you guys uh-huh. with like, and it's cool. It's because the bass and the guitar are doing different things. You know, it's just, that's just how it goes. Um, the unraveling of the unraveling of arcane past. I struggle with these song titles. Cause it's like, I mean, I, I'm sure that they have meetings with the lyrics and stuff and I don't know what the concept is. I must admit, I did not. Is it a concept record? I, Island I, is I a very know. conceptual word. I'm sure so. it probably is. What does that word mean? Ilim, I want to say it's like a I Googled Scandinavian it I just term. Saw, I just got reviews. You know, I didn't really get a lot of. Uh, Being good. I mean, the reviews were Definition. the reviews. It was, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've i said some negative things about the metal press before, uh, probably on this podcast, definitely in public. Like, they were actually pretty good. They well written. Really? But it was, again, just, you know, describing the sound. In regarding to the Big Bang Theory, the Ilum is the primordial matter of the universe, originally conceived as composed of neutrons at a high temperature and density. I'm not big on metal. It's a hypothetical original substance or condensed state of matter that is said to have caused the Big Bang. 
I want to say there's something, a word similar to it that's used in Nordic mythology that it's a different word. I got to, <sighs> I mean, they're called sunless. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I like, I dig that. It fits into the concept, at least of their band. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there is a lyrical concept in, in here that I didn't, I didn't read the lyrics, man. I, it was, it was a week. I did not either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucas. I just had so much shit to cover ground with this record that I wanted to talk about that I was like, got a mega focus on the the, the fucking no, Swedish cool. Bill, lyrics. Bill will probably tell me all about the lyrics in a minute. Yeah. But first, I just wanted to say like any any song on this record that's like around three minutes, I feel like is a banger. I'm like, yes, this is what I want from a band like this. Yeah. And then anytime it, they don't, I don't, the longest song, I guess is like the last one, but there's not that much they go over five, but even when they go over, when they go to like five minutes, even if it's with, you know, a sort of outro intro thing, like there's a, there's a time when that happens. I don't have it in my notes, but where there's like some cool noise, uh, I still am just like, man, you're giving us too much. Like just get in and get out. Maybe, maybe that means I'm getting old. I don't know what that is. Could be. I just want the shorter song. Yeah. Even, even if they have crazy structures, you know, even if there's like not, you know, it's not formulaic. I'm not expecting a band like this to be formulaic ever. It's just, it's so <clears throat> dense, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. And I find like, that's, it's funny you say that because I feel like there almost is a formula to be unformulaic with a lot of bands in this category where it's sort of where, the, you know, the more dissonant type of bands. Mm -hmm. And it's almost at a point where I'm like, man, I wish there was like, like this band, the best part about Island, in my opinion, is that, and this is a goal that I don't think a lot of bands in this style a death, of death metal achieve where there's enough in each song that gives each song its own distinction. Because I'll put on an ulcerate record, and we all know this. We ain't got to lie here. We all honest here. We ain't got to lie. We ain't got to front. We love ulcerate. But we know that it's hard to listen to a fucking ulcerate record. And that's an, I mean, even this Phil Jarrett record, it's like, I don't know what song I'm listening to. This just feels <laughs> like I'm lost in a big piece of art. You know, I love that Island feels like a record. I'm like, yeah, this is sick. I'm getting a little something like while there are, you know, because it's like for me, I'm not a guitar player. I'm a drummer. So mm -hmm. it's like listening to these. It's like, oh, cool, crazy drums that follow all the crazy guitars. But it's like sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with some of that stuff, at least as far as my attention span, because once it like I hit after a certain amount of time, I'm just like, man, what the fuck? But on this record, it was just sort of like I listened to it a few times in my car because I went out to a buddy's place over the weekend and uh, I had enough. It was like the perfect length. I'm like, oh, I'll pop it a couple times in the car, like on the way there and on the way back. And there was like parts in every song where I was like, fuck, this part is sick. Like this part is cool. But, like it's, it's very, it's still, the songs are written in a listenable way, which is nice. I feel like they are at least where, uh, as a lot of bands that I think are on this level that Sunless is where it's like their second record, they do the dissident death metal thing. I don't feel like it's a lot of those types of bands achieve what they did personally. No, I hate that. I said that so much because I actually think they're really original. You know, I think like yeah. what they're doing is, is much more genuine than a lot of bands. It is that do something similar. And that's why I think I connect with them. You know, it's like, I think we all suffer from the, the, the comparison, whatever the comparison uh, virus for lack of a better word. I hate saying anything's a virus. But where we all do that, and I mean, especially people that are reviewing metal will be like, this yeah. has vibes like this band and that band. And I guess I always hate hearing that about my own <clears> band. <throat> it's almost like the best compliment you can give a band is, oh, you don't yeah, sound, you like, don't anybody sound like any else. band. Yeah. Although I do feel like sometimes in the metal press and in journalism, you get reviews like like some bands that I am in or have been in that, that it's just, oh, we don't know what genre this is. So we're going to throw 10 yeah. genres at it. Yeah. It's almost better to have them get that out of the way in the beginning of the review. Of, uh -huh. This is this genre. However, this song is good. This song is bad. You know, whatever a review says. But. It's just such a metal thing, man. It's just so big. Everybody in metal wants to identify shit. You know what I mean? It's so huge and it's such, yeah, it's, it's prominent everything, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. We but like people to categorize stuff. Yeah. People and people fucking in, in metal, people pride themselves on their sub genres. You know what I mean? It's like, when guys are like death metal guys are like black metal is fucking dumb and it's like what dude like what you like sonically is really not that far off it's yeah like, no I, I totally get what you're saying i yeah. meant it more as like an apology because i really do like this record in this band and you know i, I maybe didn't say enough about how much i love the guitar and the bass like, 
Sure. Perpetual contrition, sick base. Of course. And well, Bill, I, mean, I wanna I wanna ask you, because you haven't said anything yet. Go on. What do you want to ask? I mean, dude, tell me how much you dug the bass tone. No, I liked it. I I, <laughs> I did like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, these like particular type of bands though are never like the ones I ever gravitate to, like to yeah. listen to album wise, uh, live wise. These are the bands I always like. Cause I'm kind of bummed that I should have probably been. Some is sick live too. I've seen him a few times. We we played with him, right? He said, "Yep." Yeah. Don't remember. I saw him with Baron Air <laughs> at uh, the Burlington once, actually. Oh, very long cool. Long time ago. I wonder was I at that show? I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Very possible. I do yeah. like the Burlington. I do like Baron Air. Um, you were probably there. Probably, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, no, no, I like it. I understand why you like it too. Like there is that, like we mentioned earlier, like the rawness of the the production of the album, which is cool and kind of cool to hear compared to like like Viljarda is like <laughs> as polished Opposite. as it gets, yeah. you know. And it's funny to hear it against this album. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I I don't always gravitate towards that sound anymore. But same, I don't mind hearing it. I guess, but like I don't know. It never, it never quite grabs me as, is it like it used to? I got you. But like I, the vibes I got were like the dysrhythmia production vibes, which is a band that I yeah. do like, but I haven't listened to in I agree. fucking, I don't know how long. I agree with that. I agree where it's like, I've definitely, it's definitely gotten harder for me to listen to bands with that production, but I will say, I think this record, there's enough on it to where I just like, I definitely noticed by the end of it, I wasn't thinking like that. You know what I mean? It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. by the time I had reached the end of the record, it was like the production wasn't even in question. It was just like, I really think this is good. I think that's <laughs> what helps with like the shortness of it too. Cause it gets yeah. in and gets out and like hits you before you know it's over yeah. and you're like, Oh, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, like, that's right. nice too. It's 40 minutes. It's mm-hmm. like, this is awesome. I think it's super cohesive. <laughs> that was actually the thing I was, I was waiting to say that. I mean, it's another, I feel like it's another, huge thing for me to actually go like yes these songs all make sense together they feel like they were written in the same amount of time even if they weren't because mm-hmm. you, know? you never know when you're in a band and you hear another band's record you're like yeah maybe <laughs> they wrote this song five years ago and this that's, one yesterday that's yes. actually a good point. you don't really like, know you, unless they tell you right uh but i yeah i have a feeling these were probably written, written around there. the same time or at least with the same intent that seems you know? fair yeah there's nothing that really jumped out to be like, oh, they were clearly somewhere different when they did that. You know, <laughs> I think being a three right, the piece cohesion is, is nice. It's like you know, I know how challenging it can be to make interesting, heavy sounding metal with one guitar, but to also to be the vocalist, like yeah, that's that shit is crazy. crazy. <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's a big part of the the impressive nature of seeing them live. live yeah, because you're just like, whoa, yeah, this dude he fucking does it, and they're incredibly tight. Yeah. Uh, their drummer's awesome. This record's awesome. I mean, I, I'm. I do wonder, you know, and I don't, I don't want to sit here all day and, and is the new drummer on production? this album? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. He is. I looked yeah. it up on metal archives. Okay. He is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you do wonder if you're, I wonder sometimes if my own brain gets ruined by the sort of like <laughs> more fake, more like huge sounding stuff mm-hmm. because the way this album sounds is very real. You know, it's like, this oh, is yeah, what 100%. bands actually sound like. If you were in a room with no microphones and anything except the vocals, like this is what you would hear. And I think most recordings in almost every genre are not made like that at all. So no, they're definitely it's, not. You go like, oh, like I can listen to death metal that sounds like it's like ten times more like punchy and like pummeling. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, that's. I guess that style of recording isn't isn't for everybody. I always mm-hmm. try to ride like somewhere in the middle. Which is dangerous because then you get hated by people that like <laughs> fake huge sounding shit and people that like right. really real raw sounding stuff. So I always understand when a band kind of more gravitates towards that, I guess. Sure. Especially a band where there's technicality involved and there's like real musicians because they, they want you to know like this is what we really sound like. It's not a, it's not, there's nothing fake about this. There's nothing mm-hmm. program. There's nothing uh, artificial about this thing that was art that we're making. I dig that. I appreciate this record and I'm glad that I got you guys to listen to it. Hell yeah. I listened to it anyway though. It should have been I heard show. it before I heard it before you fucking uh picked it. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah, I listened to dude, there were so many albums that came out on that day, like Arcspire, listen to that. This, I listened to this. First fragment came out, I listened to that. I haven't listened to that. Jerry one. Cantrell. Uh listen to some of that. Oh, actually. did you really? Yeah, I did not. Jerry Cantrell sick. Uh, plush. But, uh, I still haven't got I my did listen to a song album. or two of that. <laughs> but um 
I yeah. listened to. There's a whole bunch of shit that came out that day. Yeah, what's up with Tons everybody putting out an album on October 29? I don't know. That was Bad a Wolves big album fucking came day. Out that day. Yeah, yeah, that was that, a big day. Oh yeah. man, Have you, did you guys listen to that? I did. Did you listen to that one song that like "Summertime Summers"? I don't I know if I'm summertime summer. And I will shake your hand, name man, and I'm not sure if I made it through all that. Jason, all I might not have made it all the way through. Nate. It's the song that has that melody before. Oh, I yeah. was really, okay. I was really just enamored uh, with the <laughs> amount of songwriters on that album. Yeah. Like yeah, every time I would dude. go to a new song, I would look at it, and sometimes it would be like you could tell there was the one song that was DL and Josh. And you can fucking tell. Mm. I forget what it's called, but it's like the coolest, heaviest song. Yeah, ever. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's DL and Josh, and no one else gets a writing credit. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> who's Josh? He's the he's the drummer. Josh Bachlin. I always think it's or John. It's John, Bachlin. you're right. Did I say Josh? Yeah. Oh god, edit that out. I was gonna know. Oh god. I just kept joking. John, I think Berkland is how. At least that's how Doc's last name is Berkland. Berkland. No, I listened to the album with uh, with Al, and I was like, "This is the guy singing right. This guy singing right now is the guy that fucking wrote Whoa, Shut It Down.' Yeah, the greatest opening riff ever. Yeah, I know, dude. It's so fucking wild right now, Al. Yeah, what did Al say? He just didn't appreciate it like he should have, but you know, is what it is. I get it. Does he like the Acacia Strain? Hell yeah! Oh, it's cool. I'm excited. I'm seeing them next month, twice in a row. I just watched oh, the. Uh, you're gonna, you better be careful. You're gonna get hurt. I know, show, man. Um, I've been watching footage of the tour, and it's, it's not Texas. Very it's violent, fine. but I'll be in all the way in the back. So, <laughs> yeah, be in the back. Put a mask. It's on. at the Beat Kitchen, though. That's the thing. That's it's like, crazy that they're playing there. Yeah, I hate it. Like a bigger venue. I don't know because they want everybody to get smashed. smashed. Yeah. Well, that's actually, I think, for sound. If you, well, I don't know how close they're going to sound. Gonna fucking that awesome room in sounds there. cool, but yeah. yeah, for anybody, any band that has pits. The room is too narrow. Yeah. Like, Way too narrow, yeah. It's, it's, you're, yeah, there's gonna Somebody's be, gonna get caught on a coat rack. People will just like <laughs> run into the wall, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's not good for super crazy. <laughs> they probably won't be playing that either night. You don't think so? No, you because don't throw shoehorn in there. Like, the first night is because they do a full it album. It comes in waves and the new one, uh, Slow Decay. They're, they're doing, doing both albums. Not, not songs from Slow Decay, not the whole oh, thing. Oh, okay. I was going to say But they're doing all that comes in waves. And then the next night is all Wormwood. Damn. But I haven't cheated and looked at their set yet. But I'm going to. Don't do, do it, it, man. Why? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Surprise. You'll have more fun. Nah, I like more to fun. prepare, guys. Ah, don't you know their songs know, anyway? You'll creepy. you'll hear a song and you'll go, it's this song. Yeah, you know me. I like my spoilers. Yeah, you do. Weird. <sighs> Metallica, Safety you know spoilers. What? The Metallica show was sort of like that because I looked at the San, I looked at the San Francisco <laughs> oh, set list. Oh, you cheated! They changed it up. No, though. but it wasn't the same. I thought it was yeah. going to be the same, and I was like, okay. We'll it see, was like fifty we'll fifty, right? Up. Like they changed. Uh, like half it was the closer to like seventy five twenty five. Okay, uh, uh, same versus different, but yeah, fair enough. They got a better encore. I think we got a better overall set. <laughs> what was the encore in San Francisco? Uh, I know Battery was in there. Sick. And Seek and Destroy was in both of them. Uh, Who'd you guys get? What did we get? We definitely, I think it was uh, Fuel and one of the newer sure you songs. Did. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, it was, it was Fuel, like uh, song. one of the songs <laughs> off of the new record. I'm drawing a blank on which one. Oh, no, it was Hardwired. The song Hardwired. Oh, okay. That we're so fucked, so out of luck, which I like, <laughs> I like as a song, but I, I need it as an encore. Mm. Not necessarily. And then they did Seek and Destroy, which makes sense because it's cool. Yeah. Them at Metro. I had no problem with that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I believe they, they got battery and something else and then Seek and Destroy in San Francisco. But I, I cheated and I looked, you know, because I don't know. That, I, I don't need to talk about that show too much. Eddie talked about it enough. I'll just say that I had a very <laughs> high like anxiety level from the time that I found out about it to the time that I was inside the venue because <laughs> I just didn't think it was going to really happen and I didn't think that. Yeah, Did I was just waiting was to be turned away at oh. every at every moment of that experience until I was in the venue. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, wait, this is going to be full of people and no one's going to be wearing a mask. Like, I need to keep mine on. <laughs> like, what's was the, that? Uh, was the cap situation. at the Metro? 200? I've heard 1100 yeah. Uh, but I, 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 don't, I don't know if the fire department agrees with that. But no, yeah, like because the balcony, that. the balcony is no, the real true. X factor. It's one of those things. Uh, I Fair believe enough. they sold yeah, shit. 100 tickets to that thing. But. That sounds about right. <laughs> Fuck. You know nuts. what band's better than Metallica, though? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Megadeth? No, no. I wasn't going to say that. I was, gonna, I was trying to use that as a segue <laughs> for you. Uh, <laughs> Been working on that. Good, I yeah. thought you were, dude. Yeah. I thought you were. Have you really? I thought you were gonna sing. No. <laughs> I just the song, the Bad Wolf song. I almost did, but I'm like, I don't want that on record. It's the beginning of one of the songs. Actually, it's, that's then, the beginning of the first song on the last album. Not even. I- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a riff on one of these. Uh, on this one, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Finally, feels so good to get that out there. You <laughs> sit on that? <laughs> no, I just, I've always wanted, I always just think it's so funny. Like, I think it's cool. I do think it's cool, but it's just funny sometimes. You know, when you hear it, I'm just like, man, like, well, yeah, because this band is just so yeah, extreme let's get that into it's it. funny. Let's get into know? it. I have a lot to say about this. I try to give you a segue. Record. You just, no, Jason just starts <laughs> making fun of the vocalist and you're like, yeah, let's talk about my album. I'm sorry. Let's talk about Megadeth. You guys thought it was sick. You were laughing. No, I, I just am saying that I Watch tried the to, video give, later, I tried to give laughing. Bill a good segue. I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't and laugh. I tried not to use it. I don't need your help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys don't want to talk about my album anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Is there anything else you'd like to yeah, say? Yeah, did you want to talk more about it? No, I mean, I like, figured you were ready to go as why you were in the leeway. So that's why I didn't ask. No, I, I, that's why. Yeah, that's why I did it. I thought it was going to be a smooth segue. Well, I think yeah. it was. It's, it's a, little little bit of, uh, a little bit of turbulence. We ain't smooth here. We yeah, don't make me it. do it again, guys. What? <laughs> that's different. <laughs> that's the he does those inhales every once in a while. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He layers them so they're not yeah. just totally inhales. It's cool. I think it's sick that he does that, dude. <laughs> like, good for him, man. Taking it back. Taking it's it a, back. It's a cool sound. It's a cool sound. Yeah, I mean, it's easy. Obviously, your voice. that dude can do something that not, I don't know, Tech Nine can, but he can't scream it. You don't he can know just that. get The Rock to record a fucking corny ass. Have you guys seen that? That new Wait, Tech rock, Nine rap. song where The Rock is rapping on it. No. I didn't know it was like a Tech Nine song, but I've Dude, seen the section yeah, where he raps. A, yeah, it's a Tech there's Nine like a song. There's a music video, and I was just like, what is the happening? The Rock? Like Dwayne Johnson? Yeah, yeah well, you dude, have to see it's, it. It's so funny. It's so bad. It's rough. It's cringe as fuck, dude. It's, it's showing that The Rock is clearly like peak rock where he's just like, <laughs> nobody's saying no it's anymore. He's like, power. I'm going to do this. And it's, it's like, like that oh, type fuck. of verse. Nobody told him no. I mean, is it at least in time? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just like a hot. It's just like fast and furious. If it was condensed into like a rap verse, literally, <laughs> it's like, I can't describe it any better. You know what? I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to read the lyrics Okay, <laughs> because well, that way we fine. don't have to play the song. All right. You uh, get a copyright strike if you do that, right? We read the lyrics or if we play, no, the, if song, play the song, we could potentially. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes what happens is like, if you get caught up with it, like, Essentially, whatever money you would make from that video goes to the artist, which is fine by me because we don't get enough views to make money. So I thought it was straight up blocked, but maybe it, I'm it just, de- Rick Beato has indoctrinated me and he's just like, oh, my videos are getting blocked and he's just probably not getting his money. Who's this? Rick Beato. He's a, you've never seen Rick Beato on YouTube. He's a huge YouTuber. He's a he's a really uh, I know Rick Beato. Yeah, he's I've kind of him. a he's kind of a music education channel, but he, dude, watches him. he covers so much shit in music. Yeah, he's, he's a super school like producer, jazz musician, and um, you know, gear nerd, and just like everything. And he's really I've enthusiastic and cool. Videos. But he apparently has had some of his videos like taken down when it's no when they're blocked. <clears throat> it means he can't make money off of them. And it's because oh, yeah, yeah, he teaches people about other people's music. Yeah. Oh music well, yeah, that's why. Yeah, exactly. All right, you guys ready for this? Let's hear this fucking All right. poetry. <laughs> <laughs> it's about drive. It's about power. We stay hungry, we devour, put in the work, put in the hours, and take what's ours. Black and Samoan in my veins, my culture banging with strange. What does that mean? I changed the game, so I I said that out loud. What does that mean? That's not part of the song. <laughs> I figured. What does that mean? My culture banging with strange. Shout Dude, out to Strange cool. Music, the music label that Tech Nine co-founded. Oh, oh that's why he's mixing his my DNA with, with Strange Tech Nine's label. I changed the game. So what's my motherfucking name? Rock. <laughs> I don't what know. are they gonna get though? Oh, Tech we'll Nine says it. this. What are they gonna get though? Desecration, defamation. If you want to bring it to the masses, that sounds like a metal lyric. Face to face now 
we escalate and when I have to put boots to asses. Mean on you like a dream when I'm rumbling. You're going to scream mama. So bring drama to the King Brahma. Then what? Coming at you with extreme mana. Thank you, Brother Tech Nine. Thank you, Tarimana. One take, that's a wrap. Okay, I, that's part of the song, too. I like these. Yeah, really fucking bad. That's like so bad. How do you now have imagine that on a song? The Rock doing that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it'd be sick. I, I gotta listen to it now. I mean, it's pretty bad, that's but rough. You also thought that fucking Post Malone Ozzy song was sick, so maybe uh, you will like this. But it's no, this is way worse than that. I song. mean, I just wish Travis Scott wasn't a part of that song. That, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> you mean the devil? You mean <laughs> Satan? Him and Drake are gonna fucking t- bring the rapture to the world. We hate Stan. What is the champ, Bill? We hate uh, fuck uh, Joe Biden. What's oh, the fake uh, one? let's go, Brandon. Yeah, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> fucking Travis Scott is the devil. Wait, did he? He didn't say. Like, come on, man. That's not what I was talking about. Yeah, what are you talking about right you now? You know how people are like legitimately what? saying that Travis Scott is like. The, the reason the accident happened at his show is because he's like a, de- a devil oh. worshiper. Have you seen that shit? I have not no. seen that shit, but I, I didn't know the reason why they have it is because that's fucking many s- bunch of, but you brought morons. that song and that's the only, literally the only reason why I'd heard of Travis Scott before. Oh, wait, what song? I feel you crumbling. <laughs> that's the Ozzy post. Yes. Song. That's yeah, that song? yeah. Oh shit. I don't think I've heard he of it. He is Ozzy. <laughs> Travis Scott's on a Brockhampton song that I like. It's the most I've ever heard this guy's name before. Travis Scott, he's big. Until he's he was dating Rihanna, or if he's not Rihanna. still. And now eight people die because he worships Satan. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> not All right. anything to do with the venue being yeah like, staffed. Couldn't be that staffed horribly. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we got. I'm not doing it again. I, already did it. I thought you were going to. Yeah, I was. I was waiting for it. Yeah. So yeah, the new uh, Arch Spire, which for the longest time I thought it was Arc, but it is Me Arch. Me too. It I've is heard Arch. Them, all the say members that. themselves. Have said it's it's spelled like, like Arch, and every time I said that when I first heard of this band, people were like, "It's Arc, man." It should be Arc. I but feel like. I feel like, like it should be Arc too. I mean, like Archon. You don't pronounce it Archon. <laughs> Like, <laughs> but I'm just saying that's how they decided to spell it. The dudes who created True. the band, like, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> you like that? It blew, I love that. It just like killed you. That's so good. Yeah. It's yeah. very true. You don't say yeah. Archons. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny if you did. <laughs> that word would sound Danny so probably fucking has, weird. But oh, <laughs> definitely, one hundred percent. I mean, big, I a, think Arc Spire sounds cooler, but the way that it's spelled is Arch. That was my. That's all. I was yeah, saying. that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> There's a band called Archons. They're like a melodic mm. death metal band from back in the day, and I'm pretty sure Danny is Archon. Yeah, I believe Danny has like, said Arch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Danny's, Danny's definitely, definitely said that at some. Danny, point. please confirm this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys. yeah bleed the future man yeah fastest album ever god um, damn Ugh. especially compared so to so fast <laughs> the, the viljarda stuff oh yeah going to like this i'm like day. jesus christ yeah. this is so fast oh, i used it as a palate cleanser when i was when i was going back and forth between the two <laughs> that's fair um yeah no it, it was i mean i don't know i'm not the death metal guy you know like you guys are so like it worked out in my favor that this came out. I was like, all right, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Make it easier. Cause I, I would check it out no matter what. And they're the biggest death metal band right now. In are tech they? death. No, in tech death. Definitely. Without a doubt. They're all over the fucking internet. That's fair. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. They're, I see them everywhere. I see their name everywhere. So it's the only matter. The they new arch spire. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, yeah, we got bleed the future, man. Yeah. It, it, um, bleed it. It's funny. My initial reaction was, I was like, Oh, this is like, I mean, it sounds like our spire. It's everything you expect from them. And at first I was like, I don't know if I'm totally sold on this album. Like I like it, but I'm like, I like we did. We briefly discussed it at, uh, your show. Cause C brought it up and I was just like, yeah, I was like, I don't know. I feel like it's not as memorable as like, Yes. The previous albums were, but then when I went back after having not listened to it for like a couple of days, 
and like hearing the riffs and then exp- and then remembering like oh yeah this next riff i remember and i was like oh i remember this i remember i was like okay it is there yeah it just took me a minute to kind of like appreciate a little bit more um but yeah i don't know i like that you can hear like the bass player finally like fucking really brings it on this album too like more so than ever before which is cool and like i was watching videos of david otero like doing the nail the mix stuff on i think it was the was it the first album or second album i can't remember relentless mutation it was probably the, the relent- yeah. yeah he didn't yeah. do the first yeah. one okay so the second one and like <clears throat> some of the stuff that he talked about that he wished he did differently they didn't get to do on the album I was like, oh, I can definitely hear that he got to do some we of that We should also stuff. acknowledge this is actually their fourth record. They have Technically, a, right. Yeah, yeah, they have a first album. Is that not on Spotify? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's not on Spotify. Weird. What's up with that? I don't know. Probably some licensing shit. It was not released by Season of Mist. This is their uh, third album on Season of Mist. I'm going to okay. another piece of pizza. <laughs> you guys want some? No, thank you. Kind of do. Some what kind is it? It was just cheese. Oh, Mama Cozy's. I had some oven pizza yesterday. And night. All these five days. And then I'd break my rule of eating pizza or eating food on the podcast. Hell yeah. I, yeah. Cheers, Bill. While it's your album, <laughs> you're like, so anyway, this Orkspire album is really fast. Um, no the other thing that cracked me up was like, I, I think it was before the album even came out. I kept seeing like, they're really good about their marketing. I'll give them that. Which is probably the reason why you saw them all over the fucking internet. But like their whole, like they always have good like, like what they are is a marketing machine. Oh, they dude. are, and it's like it's just catchphrase after catchphrase after catchphrase. These fucking guys. Same. And the the one that like cracked me up for this one was 400 BPM. I was like, okay, so what? You're playing 200 BPM? <laughs> just playing 30 seconds, 64. No, what are we doing here, guys? Like, stop that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I remember before the album came out, I think they had a teaser of the 400 BPM song. I was like, what does that even mean? Like. Uh-huh. And people ate it up. Damn, you know, it I actually missed all that. I'm glad I missed the hype for this album. Really? <laughs> How? Like, it's well, I everywhere. mean, I don't know because I follow the guys in the band on Instagram, so I see their like, you know, posts. At least uh, I follow everybody, but the but the vocalist. I'm not sure if the drummer is on Instagram. Yeah, the, both the guitar players and the bass player, and and you know, they just do their band posts. And mm. I, I'm not like exposed maybe to enough other like hype things with this record i mean i could see how that could ruin it and that's one of those things that's always that yeah, doesn't really ruin it for me and this kept me in the past and it's annoyance. like it's a lot of people from taking this band super seriously because of like the marketing gimmicks mm-hmm. but they're like they're a full-time band they're making money they're trying to sustain themselves you know and there's five of them and they're still doing crazy death metal so i get it i, res- I respect that and i understand it however i can see how you know what, you, what you're saying about reading things every day on the internet mm-hmm. it sort of dilutes your impression right like i'm glad that i sort of waited until this like i listened to the singles and i liked them Mm. but man this this record it just blew me away i i don't know i think it's i don't know if i like it better than involuntary doppelganger but i think some of the songs are the best songs you mean relentless mutation involuntary doppelganger yes that is what i mean that song's fucking thank you for correcting me at least it is good um yeah I don't like it as much as Relentless Mutation still, but I appreciate it more than when I first listened to this. Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I kind of see where they're going. Obviously, we kind of see where they're going here. You know, they're doing their thing. They're just pushing the limits at it. And that's sick that they're doing that. Um, I just think I've kind of fallen off because I feel like a lot of these songs a lot of the songs to me on this album, this was my first was my first gripe on my first listen to it. When it came out was just that like, man, I clean intros like these, uh, like, you know, neoclassical clean passages in the songs. And then, you know, really heavy parts to juxtapose them. And for me, it was, it was sort of like, I found it where I was like, man, I don't even know what song I'm listening to. You know what I mean? It was that point until I would get to certain song this out, a, certain songs on this record which i do feel really stood out to me like i really liked uh like the song uh, band in the linear it's the third song i think that one's really sick it's probably the slowest song on the album um but i do really like it i think it sounds different in regards to the rest of the record where it's got its own type of vibe and i think that's really cool i also like that song acrid canon i think is really sick and the second half of the album um 
there's just some grooves and riffs in it where I'm just like, man, like it, it reminds me more of like what I really liked about Relentless Mutation and the Lucid Collective, which was like, you know, they have their arc style brand of riffing. I feel like at this point now where it's like they do this thing where they play at insane speeds, but it's like they got a cool tasty lick here. That's like not insanely fast necessarily that, or it might be insanely fast, but to the point where it's like catchy and it's like, Oh, there's a hook here. It's just really fast. You know, um, they're good at it. They're really good at doing that. And there's a lot of that on this record. I just don't know if I like it anymore. <laughs> and I wish it was just a little more different. Same. You know, like I'd like to see this brand band branch out a little bit more. I don't like one Same. of the, my, I noticed when I listened to it most recently was the drumming. Like, yeah, there's no denying that this dude is amazing and True. can just fucking shred the doors off of everything for sure. But I wish his playing could just be a little more interesting. Not that it's not interesting now, but just more like he doesn't do much with his toms. They're just so very like just little stuff here and there. I wish he could do a little more groovy stuff involving the toms some more. And like, I don't know, just branch away from like just being super fucking fast. Like he has his moments. He can definitely do it. I just wish he'd do it more, you know? Well, that's why I like that song abandon the linear. Cause I feel like the drumming is actually kind of sick on mm-hmm. it for like his style. Like I like how it's got that. You guys know the song I'm talking about. Yeah. Which track I, is just, it? I, I think it's weird. I've been the one before to, to say that almost like the drumming and well, maybe the vocals too, but the drumming was like the weaker link in this band. Cause it's not tasteful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they made this record and they're like, we're not going for tasteful. We're going for like they're not crazy fast all the yeah. time. And all the little like crazy 30 second note things he still does all the time, but he doesn't do them as much during clean guitar parts. Yeah. So I think the drumming in this album is amazing. I think this is like I said, I think that like Drone Corps Aviator is maybe their best song they've ever done. That's a cool song. Also, I, that I music video that is like the shit. I mean, the video, video is amazing. I can't then, believe how cool that video is. I thoroughly is. enjoyed the reaction video of their mothers watching it, which was really That was my funny. favorite that was marketing tool. What a great, pay for great that tool. video. Yeah. That's I'm what pay, I want to know. I'm do that for my There's a behind fans. the scenes. They talk about it. How they um, pay for it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they, the, sell, they sell their bodies? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, uh, I believe the Canadian government helped them in oh, some way. Yeah, they get money from the government. Yeah, they do. Um... And like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like that high budgeted. Like they, and they explained like the special effects and stuff that went into it and how they did it. And like, I believe uh, the singer's girlfriend was also a big help in the production of that video. She does too. Uh, special effects. Special effects. Makeup, yeah. 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 So that, that was helped amazing. a lot. Yeah. So Ollie's girlfriend, everybody, that music video, I, that was one of those things you guys are talking about the internet hype. Because I follow the the string players at least on on the Instagram and stuff, uh-huh. I was I actually didn't watch the video right away because of what you're talking about. Because they were oh, all like, <laughs> "Look at all this sick shit we're doing! It's gonna be so sick!" And like, yeah. I I was a little you know in a way experiencing what you're talking about, going like, "Okay, internet fatigue." Not like, "Oh fuck this guy, I hate this band. I'll yeah. never watch it." I'm just like, "I'll deal with this later." Like, yeah. ah, deal with it later. And then I finally watched the video this week for this podcast, and I was just like, "This is." one of the coolest death metal videos I've ever seen. So wow, awesome. You really so think so? Fun. Yeah. I like it. I, I love, I'm a sucker for uh, practical special effects. Sure. And like the concept is one of those concepts that you imagine like, uh, like let's say we're uh, here. The concept of this record is fucking wild. Well, I mean the concept of that video, it's like a bunch of people are drunk as hell or high as hell in a fucking room. And you're like, yeah, it's like, we're going to like have all these creepy people <laughs> make engineers to be better at playing our technical death metal. And, and you think like, Oh, that'll be stupid. That'll never work. But in actuality, I think it came out like it came out really cool. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe I, I, that's not my first. And then also though, the special and also the special, the practical special. Effect. Yeah, they look great. They did a great job on the video. I mean, yeah, it's, it's outstanding that a death metal video looks like that, you know? Yeah. And it, I mean, it even, it starts with Spencer on the drums. Like, that song is insanely fast. It's like <laughs> stupid fast. It starts like a gravity blast. Yeah. Like, I was just there's so many blasts on this a, record like, where I have, to, I have to go like, is that a, <laughs> is that a gravity blast or he's, is he, is he actually hitting the snare? Like, yeah, dude, the tempos are back out of control. Forth, yeah. yeah. I, I do like that. They kind of nixed him doing that weird, like moody drumming underneath some of the clean parts. Like they did on the last record that I thought sounded really awkward. Yeah. Like that. And that too, man. it's just like every single, it's like, <gasps> 
like, yeah, I'm it's just like, like dude, okay. chill. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, I get it. But yeah, I mean, you are right in the sense that this record is like, just go fast now. Just it is definitely so on brand. Yeah. There's no denying um, that. <laughs> and yeah, I think I've just fallen off the brand. I mean, maybe it's just gotten to the point where I think we're this, just familiar enough with the yeah, brand. And I think why. this time just, it just didn't feel as like, cause like I, I, you know, when relentless mutation came out for me, it was like, I thought it was sick that they made that jump. It's like, Oh fuck the recording with Dave Otero. This is nuts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like great for this yeah, band. It was, was cool. Great. Yeah. And it really was a step and up. The production from the lucid. Is awesome on this as well. Yeah. And the, it was a step up from the Lucid Collective, which I like too. You know, I like the sound on that. But uh, also, their harmonic or pinch <laughs> harmonics are great. They were, yeah, with what you delay and reverb on it. <laughs> there are a couple drum grooves. Like, there's that riff in that third song, "Abandon the Linear," where it's like, digga, 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 digga. and he does a bunch of cool stuff under that. I think. Um, but yeah, like on the last song, that's 400 beats a minute. It's just like. This is sick that you guys could do this, but I don't even know what's going on at this point. Like, and literally, other than the leads, they played all the notes ever. <laughs> other than the leads, like which are great, you know, mm. the leads are catchy and like they know how to do it. I just couldn't even like. I was listening to it with Sam. We were on the way to couples therapy and we heard it, and Sam was just like, "I don't even what is happening." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't even know." Because she liked the record surprisingly. Like, oh really? We put it, yeah. I put it on because I was I wanted to listen to it because gotta hear faster to get ready just for hear this. Fast, yeah, dude. Man, it's hear hard, fast, man. Dude. Like I could do it every song up until this one. This was the first time where I was just like, man, like this is enough. You know what I mean? It's just like I think I'm done. You know, like I think <laughs> I gotta. Fun, no. It's like I get it, guys, <laughs> but I can't go with you past this. Mm-hmm. Like 400 is fast, and like I know it's. And then that doubled a lot, but you know, in the lead, like ding, 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 ding. And I know that's not 400 beats a minute, obviously, you know, when you're playing 16th notes, <laughs> but and that's where I get confused too. Cause I'm like, is that really 400 beats a minute or is it just 400 beats a minute because they're doubling 200? 200. Yeah. So it's still insane. You cannot do that. How does a person do that? I mean, we could take a song, play it at 200 BPM. I just feel bad that for the fact that they have to 400. play this shit live. Like, that sucks. That fucking sucks. I don't know, man. I think it's... I mean, they're fully capable. I, I'm surprised that I'm the yeah. one. I'm really surprised that I'm the one that was like... Yeah, you love it. I really enjoy this I like this, this album. I like I, it. I was moved by it. I think that following this band, like we all have, I think this is a step up. It's a step up in terms of technicality which is their brand. They literally are stay tech forever. And I think that some of the stuff that I personally found more cheesy with the vocals and with the drums, like I said, on the last album, uh-huh. which I fucked up the name of last time. Relentless Mutation. No, I, I just didn't, I was pointing it out again that oh, I okay. called it involuntary doppelganger when it's called Relentless Mutation. They got rid of that stuff. And I think that it, I just think it's amazing. I mean, I am not involved in this arms race of who's going to be the fastest te- most techie <laughs> band. This band is, and they're huge. And I mean, the bass playing on this album might be my actual favorite part of the record. And maybe it's Dude, because I can hear it so well. You can hear it, yeah. But it's just like he just out. They give him a lot of room. He out shreds everybody in the band except for the drummer. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like kind of insane. I yeah, mean, I'll just say that I'll he's fucking that. nuts. And it doesn't. It's not like a super harsh like. It doesn't feel out of place in a band like this. It mm. feels appropriate. He doesn't pl- play a fretless, which I'm sure he could. That doesn't always work in the tech death world. Even a lot of like really cool bands like Obscura and you know Beyond Creation embrace the fretless. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just a sucker for the tech death stuff. I guess still after all yeah. these years and saying that I'm I'm done trying to do it myself. But yeah, I just I don't like. I don't know. I I think it's cool. The first time I heard it, I was like, I don't want to like listen to this because I didn't really like it. I just, I wish, I guess I wish that there was a little, like, I do like that they're doing their thing. I respect it. And I do really dig the fucking concept. It's very cool. I mean, I would never write it. It's all all their albums are connected. All their albums are one story. Yeah. Starting with the Lucid Collective. It's all like one thing. Hmm. Like the Lucid Collective was about like uh, this dude getting contacted by these like people from another dimension while he was dreaming and ended up being possessed by them. And like, it's this whole fucking crazy store. There's all kinds of crazy shit. There's, I can send you guys a link heavy blog. The website heavy blog is heavy. Did a whole dissection of their three newest records, Hmm. um, to like break down the concept. And, uh, 
you know, it's about like the lucid collective and the lucid collective is like these people from the other, from another dimension that are like this hive mind intelligence thing. Um, and they have like, they produce doppelgangers with this crazy ass mirror that's found in the first record. And like there ends up, uh, they end up utilizing this substance, called onyx or the drip but it's the onyx that you see like in reference in their song names and shit and that's what's on the cover of uh um relentless mutation you see the guy like tearing his face and then there's like all that weird black shit coming out that's the onyx they're referring to which is like this a living liquid that is made up from the lucid collective and it's all based on it's like what infects you to become a doppelganger it's insane like the the concepts like in the remote tumor seeker shit which is like one of the there ends up being a cult on the second record of human beings that uh discovers the lucid collective and they want to like harvest their power they're called the aum that's like the cult and um the last song on this record I think. yes yeah uh they are trying to like i don't know they're just bad and uh they start they end up stealing like kidnapping this kid that's made of teeth from the first record on the second record and they start injecting, they start taking out the bone marrow, which ends up being the onyx and they're putting the onyx inside of these dead bodies, like these corpses and they start flying up in the air. Hence drone corpse aviator um, <laughs> and human murmuration where they're reanimating dead people on the last record. Uh, yeah, it's just fucking crazy. And this one is about like, uh, I guess this certain type of uh, creature called a boa net that, the i read this whole fucking thing about it in preparation for this uh it's like this whole like this this slug type creature that produces like gold blood that like if you stare into it like the blood you could see your future and it's based on a dream the singer had about like what if human beings gave birth to things that weren't humans but they weren't phased by it you know what i mean it's like beg pending that question so he added that to this concept where it's like you know, the arm is now utilizing the use of lucid collective to impregnate people with these giant slug things, which are called the bow net, I guess, or the bow nets. I don't know, dude. And, uh, the bow net, <laughs> like dude. they produce gold blood, which is like the golden mouth of rue in that song, which is about them staring down into this puddle of, you know, gold blood where you could see your future. And it's sort of like accepted in society for some reason, hmm. because they're like, it's, it's crazy. It's really out there. Huh. It's, pretty it's cool. like a big horror thing. I would never want to write anything <laughs> like that. And like, it's normally not my bag, but they do it very well. And, uh, I'm very interested in his writing process just because it's like all the songs, the lyrics are so detailed and like, but he's going a mile a minute. I'm like, how do you write? Do you write? Like, do you serve the concepts purpose first? Are you writing based on your patterns? Like, do you have patterns in mind? Like, how is he doing it? I'm just very curious mm -hmm. because it's like, it's so wordy. Like it's so fucking wordy. He says a lot really fast. Yes. And it's a really out there story. And a lot of it is not very direct. So it's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty nuts, but, uh, it's, and there's a lot more I'm leaving out, but, uh, yeah, it's a cool concept. It's a cool record. Um, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea either. And I was just going to say, what what is with metal bands that have indecipherable lyrics doing this deep concept shit? I don't know. And I wish that like they would play off of it more because they really don't do much with the concept other than leave it on the record. Like they don't do a lot of their, mer I mean, the new merch. Yeah. Their mm. newer designs for this record have been based off of songs like and the concept directly but like in the past they do all these crazy shirt designs and it's just like shit that's like wait a minute like why don't you like talk about this insane fucking concept you has, have going on here has they the singer ever, ever talked about it in, in any, interviews yeah okay. he's talked about it a little bit here and there but it's like nobody's giving a fuck about it you know what i mean everybody's just like band go fast you know right. i get it <laughs> like, when you have a song that's 400 beats per minute it's just I, like I mean, oh, I, yeah, okay. really I think it's generally a problem concept. with the genre though it's like you have mm. lyrics that are intentionally indecipherable either because of their speed yeah i mean i tone no of voice. what he's saying like yeah or they're in another language i didn't even know that album was in <laughs> swedish <laughs> and yet you expect you expect <laughs> the listener to be to to relate to them somehow but the only way they can relate to them is if they read the story 
and like do their homework. And like, I didn't even do my homework enough for this podcast to get the concept of any of these records. Like, I never yeah, what does that say? Like, <laughs> where are we, man? Where, who am I? I guess it really depends on the level. I mean, I've, I've known that they've done concept records since the lucid collective. So like the riffs are the reason why this band is awesome. Though. I know. And nobody talks about the concepts. I like and hysterical. There's some cool concept. <laughs> shit yeah, it here. sounds awesome. I mean, I'm yeah. not saying just the speed. I'm talking about the riffs. I'm saying, oh, yeah, that, like, the riffs are nuts. The fact that this band still writes mostly in a room, the five of yeah, them is, is wild. so awesome. It's so good. And I think it shows in the arrangements of their songs. Like yeah. when you have like a sweet, like drum guitar break or like guitar, guitar bass trade, it's like, uh, yeah, people don't program that shit in Guitar Pro. I mean, nah. sometimes they do, but for the most part, it's it's a band really reacting to each other, even though it's this robotic, insanely fast music. <laughs> yeah. And I I don't know. I just love it. And I, I, uh, I'm a big fan of this band. I have to say oh, yeah. as much as I am ashamed to admit it because <laughs> they can play so much faster than I ever will. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that way too. Very fast songs with classical <laughs> parts. Yeah, it's a little too. And the classical part was a little too. Classical parts on this record are a little too classic, like a little too powdered wig for me. Like I, I, I enjoyed that stuff. I though. get that I that, like that that is part of their shtick, at, like with their clean parts, and I do think it's cool that that's like aware. And sometimes it does sound good, but other times I'm just like, yeah, I'm not my favorite. But that's just a personal preference. And that might be why I like that acrid cannon song and the other one so much because it's so like more death metal-y and like the riffs I feel like are more in that, I don't know, arc spire lane that I'm used to. But I don't know. I just what if the vocalist slowed down. That's how I always think of anybody in this band. Like, what if he's like held out words and syllables? Did more of a traditional had style a little of bit more power sometimes, not all the time. He could still go fast. <laughs> I, I'm just, it's like, maybe I would know what I would like the whole band to do that though. <laughs> like I would like, they to hear just, them write there, there are times when, well, there are times when they don't, they hold back, but that's not their thing. They just are like, I know the fast band. I know, but I would like to hear them play a slow song. <laughs> I would just love to hear them. One day they, they get, might do it as an experiment. They might. I mean, that, I, <laughs> that's I'm, a sick, like that's such a, like, think about it. How funny is that? That there's so much for them to fall back on if they don't want to go fast anymore. It's true. You know what I mean? It's like, go slower. Wait a minute. We have so many things we could this try. 200 BPM. Song, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, uh-huh. as, as much as I said, like that may seem like negative about it. Like I still like the album. I still very much like the band. Like I, I, I definitely, I want to see the evolution of this band. Like I'm stoked to see where they just Me keep too. going and going and not necessarily in like a faster way. I just musically. Cause like, oh, I want to hear faster music. Because the oh, composition is like phenomenal on this stuff. I already like, think 400 sounds bad. Like that one song, the one that I chose, like the the one to check out. Like, I the reason why I really like that song is they they have like that riff uh, that kind of comes comes and goes, and the bass player comes in, takes like a variation of it, and then they come back in all together, and then they add on that one extra little melody that just interweaves throughout those two parts, and it's like this whole like I don't know. That's why I liked about that song in particular. Is yeah, how all those, the yeah, like how all those riffs like came together at the end to do this whole thing, which yeah, which is fun, which communism they do, riff, but that but was the right like the way. one that really like stuck the out. Real to me. communism riff, the <laughs> real <laughs> communism where it, where it works and says shadows works fall, on, yeah, and says yeah. shadows fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's cool. I yeah. wasn't listening to it on that <laughs> level. I just thought that <laughs> I was just like, okay, I get it. But I do like the uh, vocals under that part. I think are cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good record for, for arc spire. They fucking crushed it. Yeah, I, mean, they, I all think of them like did a great job. They yeah. definitely have exceeded everything that they've set out to do. And then some, mm-hmm. um, and good for them. Good for those guys. Yeah, they it was just like real quick. Like, they play, hit the things, and hit the notes. I mean, they proved it again that they can fucking write their asses off. And yeah, there's really no denying that. And there. I just want to hear like their take on other stuff, just because I like the writing on this. Like, even if that means a slower song or whatever, I like I want to hear that. Yeah, I'm intrigued if by that. Song, yeah, because they're so good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would be. I I'm definitely. I mean, they're the, they're at this point where like they are a machine you know it's like Mm -hmm. they are like a career band and it's cool i think it's cool and i think it's corny at the same time (laughs) but like 
there's nobody that is going to like they are heads of that mantle right now yeah i mean they're riding that wave and they're doing it like the best way they can and you can't really fault yeah. them for that you know like as much as we might have talked shit about like their internet presence or whatever but i mean it's if you want to have some longevity in this thing you got to do that you got to like be for a real. part of all that I mean, stuff if you want to you know? keep getting bigger like they yeah. are you got to do it and while doing fucking death metal like yeah <laughs> yeah for you real. already shot yourself in the foot before the race started and now you're gonna yeah. you know so and they're three albums in with no singing so yeah and it charted right like this uh, album did well or something not on the 200 oh i thought it did no every okay no. this is the new thing that all these like all every <laughs> metal band is doing is they uh they now take like all these chart summations of like 18 different billboard charts from america and post the stats of it and i don't get it because it'll be mm-hmm. like top heavy music heat seekers chart like oh missile yeah, yeah, seeking bazooka chart you know right. what i mean it's like that shit it's like yeah what is this really best new this or, like the, yeah, yeah. you know what charted on the billboard 200 the new mastodon hit number 20 on first week sales and i believe that last every time i die record that just came out charted as well like really? those are albums that charted on it. Like in my, like I've always hmm. known billboard to be the billboard 200, the top 200 albums. That's how like, it used to be. Yeah. And now you have all these weird little subcategories. Yeah. Yeah. And metal bands crush it there. Like arc spire did crush it amongst the subcategories oh, okay. for sure. But I don't believe they broke anything on the billboard 200. I'm a little surprised. White chapel didn't even on their last yeah. album. Yeah. that's the first time they haven't. Hmm. So that's pretty wild. Well, the first time they haven't since like their third album or some shit. But anyway, mm. uh, yeah, but they did chart on many charts and I believe they okay. charted in Canada, like period. You know what I mean? At like, this point, they're the ambassadors of Canada. Yeah, right? they, they own they, the country now. now. <laughs> Dean is the prime minister. Yeah, <laughs> he will be one day, man. And then him and Claire will do videos from whatever yeah. political <laughs> office that the prime minister lives out of and they'll be like so Claire, do you want to well. learn how to watch me fuck up this part on Is guitar or levels of uh, metal <laughs> you want to watch me uh i never do this right there's like, gotta be an easier way to do this that's my dean lamid brush that's pretty good is it good it's not bad thanks man i got ollie and <laughs> dean in one episode here so bad. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. a little bit of spencer you had earlier with the yeah yeah, there you go. So you got three, three out of five. <laughs> Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, nice. I wonder if that guy could play a slow song. <laughs> like, I just want to hear it. He's just like, I just want to like tour with him and be like, <laughs> it yo. shuts down. <laughs> I was going to say, be like, yo, tomorrow throw, throw your uh, front of house a uh, curveball. Play when the levee breaks at the sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how it goes. You know that one, right? I mean, I I should I can play that one. Yeah, that poorly, but you know, people act like that's a hard. So people have like multiple people have been like, "Can you play that song?" I'm like, is that a hard song? Is that a hard, difficult song? When the levee breaks by Led Zeppelin on drums. I don't Do you think not so. actually know if that's a hard song. No, it's not. I know it's not a hard <laughs> okay. song. I was like, but I'm just it, there's a bunch of people that act like have asked what me is that the goddamn like, riff. <laughs> like it's like the drum part is just like <laughs> Is he doing it right? Uh I mean it's yeah. I'm doing so it off the top of my head. Sort of. Not really. right, guys. It's actually <laughs> playing pretty terribly so maybe these people were asking for the right reasons. But <laughs> we can listen to it. It's, no, no, uh, no, 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 It's a very it's a very basic drum groove with a good feel. I use it as an example because it's a it's an iconic solo drum thing and it's slow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I brought it up. All right. So send that challenge out to the drummer of Arch Spire, Arch Spire guys. Yes. <laughs> Please. Sure his version of it. I want to hear him play it. I wish our show was bigger. There might be like get a, to him. <laughs> in there. It might be like. <laughs> 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 he'll, he'll get those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah check dude. it out listen to that song <laughs> i mean that would still not sound like an arcspire song though it would sound different it would yeah it would sound way different, different. but good for him that album cover is sick too i like the album artwork cool looking. i'm a big fan yeah and you know what i think it's sick that they're just like this death metal t-shirt selling machine now um that plays really fast 
and we'll forever probably get on really good tours. We're all just jealous we can't play that fast. I am. I'll be I'm not. I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm jealous on the inside, but I don't. I don't know. When some party just like to have that ability to go to. I mean, I don't think. Yeah, I, but I'd I, rather like know how to play guitar. Period. Than know than <laughs> yeah, how to play drums but, that fast. You I, know what I mean? I'm more so jealous. I would rather. I'm more jealous that people care about them as much as they do than I am about how fast they can play. It's, yeah, it's like a double thing. It's like, yeah, you deserve it. I can't play that fast. You know. Yeah. It, it makes it more like a. It probably sucks to play every field. night. I mean, they can do it. It's probably not that that I know. sucky. We've seen them and played with them. Yeah, yeah, they're not bad. See him at the forge again, man. Yeah, me either. Fuck that. Just that venue. You don't want to hear what they sound like in a gymnasium? Come on, man. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Arc Spire. Arch Anything Spire. else you want to say about? Yeah, I know. Uh, no. I give it like a five out of ten for me. I could really. We didn't I rate any of the other records. Uh, yeah, we did. I don't know. I <laughs> guess I'm just summation. I'm sure the How many pizza one? slices would you give it? You gave it a, a couple. Ten. I'll give it a few. Okay. Few good. Let me give it half a pizza. All right. It's <laughs> cool for what they do. I just think. Um, I I don't know. I just couldn't get into it as much as the last record, and I think it's because I didn't find as much variation between the songs, or at least for me, that was my experience. It seemed like a lot of the songs bled together mm-hmm. to the point where I was just like, okay, I get it. Fast part melody, clean part neoclassical got it you know and then it got to the point where i was obviously thoroughly thoroughly implant thoroughly (laughs) impressed by the uh (laughs) you like that i just had a stroke yeah thoroughly impressed by the musicianship yeah i mean said band but i um, i think it hits all the check boxes for this yeah it definitely does i just uh it's I know if I want to go back and listen to our expire, I'm just going to go listen to lucid collective for relentless mutation probably. <laughs> and I like the lucid collective because it's like slow compared to these last yeah, couple right. records. And, uh, well then just wait for the next record to come out, which will be even faster. And then this one will be slower. And yeah, be like I like said, that ones. 400 B per minute song at the end, I could barely tell what was going <laughs> on. And I'm not even saying that as a joke. Like mm. I had to listen to it a couple times to really get it. And I was just like, this just like, I don't think it sounds good this fast. Sounds like a bunch of pissed off I don't bees. think the, it mm-hmm. sounds like when you go on YouTube and you find an audio, you know, a video of like a song and you could speed it up like double time. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> like it literally sounds like I'm listening to like something that I accidentally hit fast forward on. <laughs> like that's what it You're felt like. like. So about the sounds. Ah, I don't know what it is. That you realize like, oh, fuck, I put it on the 1.25. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah it sure. sounds like that. And I'm just like. I get that they want to go crazy <laughs> fast and that's so sick. They could do this. I just like, don't think it sounds good. I just don't. I don't know, well, but that's just me. I brought up the venue thing. I mean, that, that is actually your uh, acoustic reality. I mean, once music gets to a certain tempo, I mean, especially when it's metal, but just in general, you know, you're not going to, it's not going to sound good because you're in a room that reverberates mm-hmm. you're, you're the, the reverberations are going to be off time and almost just as loud as the primary sound that you're hearing uh stefan from obscura he I, I recently watched like a video interview with him and he's the singer and and guitar player and like one of the main songwriters probably the main songwriter in that band at this point mm-hmm. and he was saying i think it was past like 220 uh he was talking about warm-up exercises or something like that and like their writing tempos and he's like yeah it was like 220 or 230 he was like past that tempo nothing sounds good and for a band like Obscura to say that, I mean that that's something. I mean that mm-hmm. they have a lot of credibility. They're they're yep. a, a technical death metal band through. Is and their through. new album out? Not yet. Jesus, I feel like there's only been eighteen different singles <laughs> they put out from it. Maybe it is. I've like seen a couple of videos. Four, I haven't. There's. Li- I think they literally have released four songs from that record. So really, far. yeah. Put the fucking thing out. <laughs> <laughs> angry. <laughs> angry <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I had to get that one out. Sorry, <laughs> Sherry, guys. It's okay. The compressor's got it. <laughs> Did your ears, though? I have you really low in my oh, Bill, you, mix. you picked this record because you just <laughs> I had wanted no other choices. No, I, I, I almost picked it, and I thought you might, and that's I, why I didn't. I Well, it's funny. You being texted honest. either us or Jason, your pick. No, I texted and, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And uh, two of you. he was like, oh, he picked. You. It was last week on the yeah, show. Yeah, and he's like, he picked uh, Sunless. I was like, all right, I'm going with the new arch spire just because yeah but i i thought in my head i'm like what's bill gonna even pick and i was like he's gonna pick that so i should pick something else that's fair i appreciate that yeah I'm running out of you metal. always say that you're always like oh, i don't know Getting low. what's coming out next month <laughs> <laughs>
No, nah, I always got something on my sleeve. That's what Wikipedia is for. Yes, it is. Well, we still haven't done any decapitated, right? Nope. It's tough to do because it's not. It's on, on streaming shit now. Yeah, it's all, all of it? streaming shit now. Yeah. It's all back on Spotify. Really? Yeah. It's been for a while now. Uh, yeah. Shit, let's do it before they take it back off again. <laughs> <laughs> or Eric finds another reason. Yeah, to they're like, ah, oh, fuck you. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Oh, all right. I'll we'll have to look back into that catalog. And now that we did Viljarda, we could definitely accept Mashuga. So if you no, ever want to do open the floodgates. Come on, I'm you don't want to hear my opinions on Mashuga? <laughs> Actually, I really do, but. I love this thing. fucking I artwork. Know. I didn't want to talk about it. I did it. Speaking of Mashuga, I watched a video recently. Like, I'm sure you're sick of this, but like Bill Burr talking about Mashuga. But more more uh, recently, he was on like Howie Mandel's like podcast or whatever. And he's talking about Mashuga there. They brought it up again because he had like saw them more recently and Danny Carey was in the audience and he was talking about and it's funny because like Howie Mandel's like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying right now because he's being very specific about drums. He's like, I don't like, know drums. I don't yeah, know what's Mashuga. What's there was some sort mean? of some sort of fuck up in the song, but they like got back on and he said like, he just like looked over at Dan Carey and Dan Carey's like mine was blown that they were like, they crushed it still. Like and that was pretty funny. And then I guess Howie Mandel's son who helps him with the podcast is a drummer himself, musician or whatever. And he asked him, he's like, do you know what Bill's talking about? And like, you can't hear the kid and Bill even says like kind of under his breath, but he's on a mic and you hear him. He's just like, he goes, yeah, well, you know, I wish he had a mic that I could hear him on. <laughs> like, clearly, like, I'd rather talk to this kid right now about Meshuggah than Howie Mandel. <laughs> he knew it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the kid was familiar with it, but, yeah. like, he didn't have a mic, so he couldn't talk to Bill Burr about it, and Howie Mandel has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. I think like, I know what the snare drum is. You know? He knew the word Meshuggah, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> oh, they're a Yiddish band? They're from New York? <laughs> no, actually, they're not. And of course, uh, Bill Burr butchered the drummer's last name. He's like, I don't know how to pronounce it. He's like hockey, he went, <laughs> you know, like cake, like Thomas. I gotta listen to Thomas. That. I love when he talks about my sugar. Oh, right. It's I fun. It's, it's so a nice sick. short, like two minute long video. Yeah, uh, nice. really Thomas funny. Hake. Right. I do enjoy how much he does, like genuinely appreciate that band on a more oh, than yeah. just a surface level thing. And it's funny. And then I went down a rabbit hole trying to find Bill Burr drumming videos, which was funny. Yeah, is he good? He's all right. Yeah. It, somebody, I was dying because one of the videos, it was like, it was uh, him, Nikki Six, Scott Ian, who else? Like doing an ACDC cover. And I was just going through the comments and somebody, it cracked me up. They were like, they're like, man, like all these comments are all these people cheering on Bill Burr. Like he's some sort of special needs kid playing football on the high school team. <laughs> and I was fucking dying. And that's exactly like, I was like, He's crushing it right now. He had a few parts he missed, but that's all right. He's killing it. Like everybody was so that's supportive. So it was so fucking funny. Like, he's not a drummer. He's a comedian. He's supposed to suck at drum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. You know, like that's it's pretty cool. fun. It's yeah. cool to see that guy doing that. I'm good for Definitely, him. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. A guy no, like that likes metal and some. Oh, hell yeah. Form, it's awesome. So it's very cool. But anyway, enough about Bill Burr. Shit. That's all I got. What time oh, is it? I'm tired, guys. I gotta go Dude, home. Tired. All fucking day. Any Dude, last words? I'm good. I got nothing. You got anything to plug? Yeah, what you plug? Uh, up? Come see my band, Immortal Bird, on tour. If you happen to be, oh yes, in Columbus, Pittsburgh, Philly, DC, or New York City, with motherfucking witching up in here, uh, and Wanda Sykes is opening, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about Wanda. Oh but, uh, shit. Oh. Yeah, there's a Might couple. There's a couple. Uh, I don't know all the bands on every show at this point, but Piron's playing with us in New York, and Sick. Uh, Lopin cool. is playing with us in Columbus. Sick. I'm very stoked about those. I'm stoked about all Hell the yeah. shows, frankly. Um, yeah. Other than that, I got nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. How about you? Uh, this will be out well after our show before Thanksgiving. Something is waiting. <laughs> will it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is. We're actually way ahead of schedule. We're like two weeks ahead. On episodes right now. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Why? No, I don't know. I don't think I brought up Astro World. It's fine. I did. <laughs> yeah. It's so? fine. It doesn't matter. I don't get it. I don't get it. What's the big deal? Is it going to come out for three weeks or whatever? Two weeks. 
Well, Travis Scott will be dead by then, so. Exactly. Well, then I can't. Well, this has been announced, but uh, I am. Uh, something is waiting is playing with I Hate God at Cobra Lounge. I in saw December. that. Yeah. Apparently, that's a big deal, I've been told. Yeah, that band's huge. Isn't I've seen a lot of I Hate God too? shirts, so I know that's. Isn't High Priest on that too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. sick. It'll be awesome. I think I kind of felt the same way the you first time. Pete come I, play a song. The first time I played with yeah, I Hate God. Replaced. Actually, you should, you should do that. That would be really cool. It wouldn't be that actually that hard to do. That'd be actually kind of fun. Yeah. It'd be sick. If you're playing some old shit, you should. Play whatever And then you go like, out on stage and, f- and fucking kill a High Priest <laughs> song, dude. <laughs> Fucking shred over it. I'll do it, man. It sounds like a high priest song. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, they kind of sound like Arc Fire, right? They're like Arc Fire, but if you took the YouTube algorithm thing and switched yeah, it, just, it down, just went down to like to point, like point <laughs> yeah. zero two, there and yeah, go. they sound just like high priest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love doing that now. I'm gonna do that to my girlfriend as you soon should as I get home. And put out that laugh. fucking last Archspire song and fucking just slow it down and be like, "Oh, now I get it," <laughs> and then slowly work it up, yeah, to the point where it's back to normal speed. And you're like, "I understand." And now I can hear now you it. appreciate yeah. it. I don't know if I'll appreciate it <laughs> at that point. I honestly don't want to do that either. So <laughs> I probably I'm sure that is some YouTube video somewhere of the yeah. people slowing down their music. I'll have uh Rick Beato fucking do it, man. I'm gonna send him that song and be like, listen, old timer. <laughs> what are you plugging? Uh <laughs> I plug in uh <laughs> Um I got nothing, man. I don't really think I have much to plug, and it's so okay. hard to think about it because we're so far ahead. I guess Merry Christmas, everybody, and I hope you had a good Thanksgiving <laughs> and uh, Happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Plug the uh, regular holidays. Oh damn, yeah, it's it's gonna be coming um, out then. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this will basically be coming out a year from now. So, yeah, so be ready. I hope you guys had a good year. <laughs> uh, this will be in February. Really. No. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. I really hope everyone sent their mom yeah, something for Valentine's Day. We love you all. You're all our <laughs> Valentine. <laughs> Even the fucking. Also, it was our six year yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Fuck oh, yeah. What'd you guys do to celebrate? We Absolutely fucked not, yeah. violently. <laughs> and cool. you were there. And you don't do that every week? God. No, no special just, just for the anniversary. Every, once a year. Once a year, we fuck violently. It's a lot of pent up uh, aggression. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> what are you gonna I do? Nothing aggressive hey, about it. With two fucking adults here, what are you love. gonna do? Anyway, we're off the rails. So let's. Yes, we are okay. Let's call it a night. Yep. Um. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. Yep. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me, brothers. Hell yeah! Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for the I pizza. Really, truly appreciate. You're welcome. It. Let's hang out more in mm. this room. You don't have to record it on a podcast. Mm. <laughs> let's not get carried away, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, yeah. See y'all. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, feel free to drop us a like or a comment on whatever platform you uh, listen or watch us on. Uh, share us on whatever social media you use. Every little bit counts, so we appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next week.